There is only one game in town tonight, and if the town's Omaha, Nebraska, that means something. It's the College World Series, and it has all the cliches you want. For Mike Martin, trying to win his first College World Series title, and LSU, it's now or never. Backs are against the wall. Want to go home for us. Try and reach our ultimate goal. That's one of the national championships. Hits it hard and through, and it gets by the right fielder. Breaks for home. Dropped it home, and we're tied. Let's go. We got a shot at this. I don't want to win it bad, but I know how difficult it is. Dreaded two words, elimination game. Also the most exciting words when it comes to the College World Series. ESPN's coverage of this NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Paul Maneri and Mike Martin. One guy has something the other guy wants. A lot of experience for Mike Martin and Florida State, which Laura Rutledge will talk about in a moment. Paul Maneri has got some titles under his belt. Take a look at the bracket. And, of course, this is the elimination game being played tonight. we got another one tomorrow, Louisville and TCU in the same situation. But focus on the game between two of college baseball's Blue Bloods, LSU and Florida State, joined by Kyle Peterson, former LSU great, Sam and Pant wearing Ben McDonald. Yes. And we'll get to Laura in just one moment. Let's talk about LSU, guys. They had four guys get drafted, and they said, you know what, we're going to pass on that. We want to come back, and we want to get to Omaha, and once we get there, we want to win. So they're here now. Yeah, I mean, this is like the signing deadline deal. Right. You get these guys back, and, and really it turned LSU into preseason top five team. Offensively, they got one, two, four in the order. Robertson will lead off. Freeman hits second. Dykeman hits fourth. Dykeman the power. Robertson and Freeman the speed guys, and when they're on base, this is when this LSU offense really hums. But, Ben, the return to Joe, Jared Poche has been massively important this year. Yeah, big for LSU to get him back. Wasn't supposed to come back. He's really been the heartbeat of this team. I tell you about you like to have the experience on the mound where the senior's going to give you that. 38 wins. That's second. Are tied for the most in LSU history. And how about this? No pitcher in LSU history has ever won nine or more games three consecutive years. He's done it four consecutive years now for the Tigers. They've had some really good pitchers there, including the guy sitting right here and Ben McDonald. Donald Poche, according to Paul Maneri, that's the guy we want on the mound tonight. Mike Martin, how about it? 16 College World Series appearances. Last year they won it for the coach at Coastal Carolina. That was a Cinderella story. Laura Rutledge, there's no glass slipper here for Mike Martin. Yeah, that's right, Revy. He's got all kinds of experience here in Omaha, but he just hasn't done the one thing he wants to do, which is win it. This team would like to change that for Mike Martin. To win that first World Series for Mike Martin and Florida State. I mean, it, I mean, I, I came and wrapped my mind around what that would do, you know, for for the program. It's unbelievable. I mean, he is the greatest baseball coach of all time. If he isn't statistically speaking yet, he will be when it's done. And I hope we can do everything he can to get him that big one. I love to compete. I know it's going to be a huge accomplishment, but we're just so excited and so proud to be out here representing Florida State University. To say these Florida State players love Mike Martin might be an understatement. They want to do whatever they can to get their coach this elusive College World Series championship. And Taylor Walls told me that he's tired of the whole mantra of just get to Omaha. He said it should be get here and win it. And that's the way this team is approaching it right here in Omaha right now. They're ready to go. They want to see what they can do in an elimination game. Little Hart Man Edwards pregame speech. You play to win the game. And you got to win tonight or summer starts tomorrow. First pitch is coming up. Tonight, if they get a win, they get to continue here in Omaha, and it will be the 50th of the season for the LSU Tigers. They beat Mississippi State in the Super Regional, and they are making their 18th College World Series appearance. They have all sorts of titles. As we take a look at our Capital One batting order, LSU, the road team, and they bat first. Zach Watson, to me, Ben, is one of, I mean, maybe the second half of the season, as impressive a center fielder as we've seen in the entire country. Just a freshman continues to grow, it seems, every day, and the power has come on late. He has five home runs. Over half of his home runs have come in the last three weeks. And the guy that gets the start in the ball for Florida State, his name is Cole Sand, 6'3", a 5.05 ERA, but his last three appearances have been outstanding, a 129 ERA, 14 innings, just two earned runs, and 18 Ks. Oh. And lo and behold, look what happened to the 
mop for Kramer Robertson. Last time we saw him, dark hair. Today, platinum. Nope. What happened? I think this is a little homebrew. This looked like something we went and bought up the street and just gave it a gave it a whirl. That's got a little Cajun flavor to it. Yeah. A little, a little something. 1-1, one, one, line shot right at the second baseman. He is now 0 for 9. That may be one of the reasons, Laura, he decided to change the color of the uh, locks. He wanted a little change. That's exactly right. And actually, it came from Greg Dykeman. It was Dykeman's idea. Turns out Micah Gibbs' girlfriend is a hairstylist. She did this, and she said it was about a two-week process that was done in a night. I saw Kramer before the game. He said, I'm not sure if all my hair is going to fall off or what, but either way, he's rocking it. Well, he's rocking it, and he just hammered that baseball, but uh, he's been uh, victimized by some hard luck. He's hit it right at a couple of players, and that one ends up in a lineout. Cole Freeman bats now a 90-mile-an-hour pitch from Cole Sands. His last ball game, Robertson hit missile to shortstop, missile to left field, and had nothing to show for it. What can we expect from Sands tonight? You know, the fastball can be very, very good. I mean, he can get low 90s, sometimes mid 90s with a fastball. I, I think the one key thing to watch with Sands today is, is what the secondary stuff is. No, Sands! Adam Dowdy's calling the balls and strikes tonight. The guy that we all fell in love with last night, Troy Fullwood. He's down at third base. Nope. Did a heck of a job uh, calling balls and strikes yes, last night. Mark Ewell's at second, and Steve Mattingly is down there at first. 3-1 hole. Four down the middle, 3-2. and two. Like to get Freeman on the bases. He can fly when he gets on him. He and Antoine Duplantis, who's on deck, 19 stolen bases on the season. On the ground to third, Busby short hop. Well done. Nice play. Dylan Busby over there throws it across the diamond and two down. Yeah, Busby will fool you a little bit. For a big guy, moves around pretty good. Charges this ball, knows he has to come get it. Cole Freeman runs as well as anybody. Busby, a really accurate throw on the run and just gets Cole Freeman. Seen some uh, power from Dylan Busby, and I was about to say it. Now you see it. Third round pick, Pittsburgh Pirates. Dead central. First game, Busby went out. So Cole Sands, we had talked about the stuff already. The fastball is a plus fastball, can get into the mid-90s. I think the key tonight is can he locate that fastball. He's got to be able to finish with two strikes. That's a good sign with a fastball right there, trying to start it inside to plant his kind of gaps on it. But when he gets to two strikes, that sometimes can be the issue for Sands is their put-away stuff. Doesn't need to be a strikeout, but put-away stuff to finish the at-bat. Ground ball the short, fielded cleanly by Walls good across first. the diamond, and that is a good first. Cole Sands picking up where he left off in his last three starts. And the Knowles are coming to bat for the first time tonight. Welcome back to Omaha. Carl Ravitch, Kyle Peterson, Big Ben McDonald in with us tonight. Eduardo Perez is actually calling the Dodger game a little later tonight. And Laura Rutledge down on the field. 46-22. They finished fourth in the ACC Atlantic. They almost didn't make the tournament. Then they went on and won the ACC tournament championship. And uh, they've been here a lot. 22nd College World Series appearance in the first since 2012. Take a look at our Capital One batting order tonight. I, to me, I mean, we, we talk about Busby. He's already hit a home run. Luke has been one of the most consistent all year. Walls can get on base. But I, I just get a feeling that Quincy Neaporti might run into one tonight. 80 RBIs over the course of the season. He does have 10 home runs. And for the senior, he does not want this to be his last game. Big time power from that right side. And, Poche leaves one out over there. Nia Porte could give it a ride. Yeah, Poche, see from Lutcher High School, Lutcher, Louisiana. Senior, been on the bump a lot, making his 69th career start, which is an LSU record. He's got to get off to a good start. In his history, he has struggled a little bit finding his rhythm early in the ballgame. If he gets through and navigates that first and second inning, he can go for a while. I think the all-speed pitches and the changeup is going to be the key from him, that breaking ball and changeup. Florida State, obviously, a very good hitting fastball team. They take a lot of pitches, so Poche is going to have to be able to dump that all-speed stuff in there consistently tonight. Take a lot of pitches, understatement. They like to walk a lot. 
Uh, ben, you've been in this situation. Is it unique wearing uh, the purple and gold of LSU to be in an elimination game, or is it just what it is? No, I think it's just what it is. I mean, especially for a guy like Poche that's been around so much, it, it is just what it is for him. And he understands the situation like both teams of these teams understand what it is. All right, so heart beating a little faster. What's it like to be out there in a game like this? Heartbeat beating a lot fast Absolutely. right now. I mean, it, especially this first inning, for whatever reason, starting pitchers, and I had my trouble with the first innings too because you just not – what you have in that bullpen sometimes doesn't translate when you get on that mound in the game situation. The batter steps in the box. You get a totally different adrenaline flow than what you can create down in that bullpen down there. And so sometimes you just don't have the rhythm that you want, and that's why if you can get through the first inning, you typically start to find that rhythm. Really good start, though, for Poche. He gets the strikeout, and Walls is retired. So, you know, once they use them a lot, you know. All right, in between innings, this is what happened. They went over to get one of the bats that was used by an LSU player, Paul Maneri, and the uh, home plate umpire, Adam Dowdy, examining the bat. All the bats have to be approved. So they brought it over to the committee. Several of the committee members sit right behind home plate. And uh, without knowing what they're looking at, we know they're looking uh, at the it's back. Usually, it's probably a dent. They're probably looking for a dent or something because before the whole thing starts, they've got to put those stickers on them to, to approve them all. I would assume that's what it was. So there is an approved sticker on this back, guys, and they were checking for a dent, just seeing if it had flattened out at all. It came from the umpires wanting to check it themselves, and Paul Maneri had come over and asked if it does get decided that it can be approved if they could get it back. He wants to get it back in the game. Any penalty for a bat that's lost its dent? Run a few poles after the game. <laughs> this is Dylan Busby, the third baseman out of Sarasota, Florida. Third rounder for the Pirates. Well, they got like a donut they slide over the head yeah. of the bat, right? And as long yeah. as it slides up and down on the head of the bat, it's a, it's a legal bat to use. And it looks like they're looking, I don't know if they're looking at the cap or maybe a dent by the cap. People at home, what, what's the significance of a small dent in the bat? What, what, makes, what makes that? I mean, all these bats probably have a tiny dent in them. Yeah, I, I think, you know, these bats have a break-in period to them. And when they get broke in too much, they flatten out a little bit. You know, and when they start to flatten out, you get a little more spring with the ball coming off the bat. So it has to be the same. The exit velocity is supposed to be the same. For most everybody, it's Poche just off to an outstanding start. Two straight strikeouts for him. So as long as they run the donut over the top of it, it can slide back and forth easily. It's a legal bat. Right Poche's now. got uh, the old breaker ball going so far tonight, Ben, because both strikeouts have been on that pitch right there. Yeah, well, that's what he's going to need. And we talked about that in the open. You know, he's going to have to establish the all-speed pitches because Florida State is so good. And Poche, you know, he picked up a cut fastball this year. It's a little bit different. That's the overhand breaking ball that he's had forever. And that's normally the one that he can pile the strikeouts up with. Jackson Luke is the left fielder. He hits third sophomore out of Orlando Florida and the first pitch is away think of all the great pitchers and Ben was one of them that have pitched at LSU and this guy with a win tonight will become the winningest pitcher in LSU school history part of that is how many years you're there for sure we get that there's a ground to the third this inning may end the same way that LSU's did cross the diamond one two three for Poche The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by the Lincoln Continental. And Walmart. Save money. Live better. Mike Martin through the years, or as they fondly call him, 11. He's led FSU to 38 consecutive NCAA tournament tournament appearances and he's got some great stories he was telling us some of them earlier today 1980 the first game he ever coached it was against Miami he was coaching third base and he was all excited about himself and then nobody ever got to third base so he said it didn't go as planned but that actually was the same day as the miracle on ice so maybe he lucked out no one was really paying attention to him guys <laughs> worked out all right since Think that so? was great today he's like I I couldn't even talk to anybody the whole day. Nobody got to third base. They ended up losing two out of three. They came back and won the third game, and that was uh, the beginning of the career. In fact, it was over 50 years ago when Mike Martin first appeared in Omaha as a player. Half a century, 52 years ago, oh. he was a player, and when he got here, he, he didn't play because he had, as he said, took one for the team. So he broke his arm, so they sent him down to the first base box so he could coach. 
in a sense, you could say that was the beginning of the uh, coaching career for 11. Greg Dykeman sends one into right field on a changeup. Ray at the second base throw is in there, but he's, he slid right by it. Dykeman with a double. He gets going. This is a different offense, man. You got a different right fielder, too, and I'm sure LSU's aware of it, but a little different arm out there in Tyler Holton. Changeup, it looked like. It was elevated a little bit. Dykeman smokes it to right field, and he's taking a double right out of the box. Holton, who we saw on the mound, game one of this tournament for Florida State, just a little bit offline. Dykeman's in there with a leadoff double. Yeah, that's online. He's out. That's a good, uh, good arm out there. We saw it the other night on the mound. He was outstanding. Just pulled him off the bag. So a good uh, start for LSU with Dykeman on second. Here's Zach Watson, the center fielder. Gets him popping that bat. First pitch is up and out of the zone. Watson's only a freshman. One of the things we've seen at the College World Series this year, you got these great programs. They all are strong up the middle, in particular center field. Tonight, Stephen Wells plays center for Florida State. Flowers is the guy they've had out there, and he's tremendous, but he sits tonight. He's been struggling at the plate. That right on right changeup right there. That one was a little bit better. Wind has been blowing out for the most part here early in this College World Series. The temperatures are going back up a little bit. But during batting practice, uh, they had no problem hitting them out of the yard. That one is ripped, but it's pulled foul and into the seats. Yeah, it's, it's going to help you to left. You, you get one backspun down the line, that wind's going to help. But you get one backspun down the right field line, it's going to knock it straight down or blow it to a bigger part of the ballpark. This is the more traditional wind this time of year. Heats up, wind starts coming out of the south. Look at that, 15, almost uh, 15 miles an hour blown out down that yep. line and left. Nine home runs in the season for Watson. Weird game, the first game that they had. It was LSU's, and uh, we saw some mistakes from Florida. Speed of LSU, and they were able to come back and win. For a long time, it didn't feel like that was going to happen. Well, and honest, that's a game that Florida State should have won. Yeah. I mean, just they flat should have won it. And one play, they make three errors, and a guy scores on a strikeout from first base. Two things that you just don't see. Two strikes. Ooh. <laughs> Get a little flinch right there. Yeah, he did. Adam Dowdy almost wanted to call that a strike three. You could see him. You can see the umpire just kind of flinched just a little bit. That ball just at the bottom of the knees. Cole Sands didn't get the call this time. And through. Dykeman had a retreat to second base, so he's not going to score on the single. He stays at third. That ball was hit on the line. He didn't know where Walls was, so he went back to second base instead of taking off on contact in a smart play. Yeah, it's the right move. It's absolutely the right move because you can't take a chance that it's fielded up the middle and you're throwing out at second base. You can see the move by Dykeman. Spins, then tries to find a baseball. When he sees it, it's through. He's got no chance to get there, but two very good swings for LSU to start this inning. Double by Dykeman down the right field line, and then Watson leans on one up the middle. Yeah, Kramer Robertson started things off with a line shot to the second baseman, so they've hit the ball very hard. All right, Ben, so if they're hitting the ball hard off of you, what, what do you do to, to miss some barrels? Well, in this, in this situation, if you're saying you're trying to stay out of the big inning, you know, you're okay with them scoring one run. I'm trying to get a ground ball double play right now and maybe try to Maybe just give up one run in this situation. But the balls have been up for Sands. If you notice, Dykeman's changeup was kind of elevated up a little bit. He worked himself in a predictable count off of Watson going 3-2 and got a fastball out over the plate to Watson. So for Sands, he's got to work ahead. Be ahead and try to stay down in the zone. Florida State has turned 45 double plays this season. Take a look at Josh Smith. Greenwell Springs, Louisiana. 5-10, 178. He's only a freshman. He's got four home runs. His goal, elevate into the outfield. Good spot. Back-to-back -back good spots. First pitch fastball, two-seamer outside black. Then came in and stuck it and left it on the inside corner. I think he's going to have to win with that pitch tonight. If, if Sands is going to win, I think he's going to have to win with, with the fastball because the slider looks a little bit flat. Changeup looks okay. 
But fastball command is going to be the determining factor tonight for Cole Sims. Yeah, I mean, you, you can look at the numbers. When you got a hit per innings pitch, that tells you something. The strikeout to walk ratio, not bad, but it tells me he gets behind a little bit that starts to elevate that fastball. It's like all of us. We get predictable counts. It gets tough. Josh Smith 0 for 6 in Omaha and has been a very productive hitter for most of the season. Was in the NCAA tournament up until Omaha. Dykeman's at third after a double. Watson singled him to third. Stay there, stay there, stay there, because that one didn't get all the way in. Yeah, and Josh Smith, I mean, for a freshman, a pretty mature approach to the play. He's going to sit back with two strikes and expect the off-speed stuff. So if you can locate a good hard four-seamer in on his hands, it may be money. 23 pitches here in the top of the second, and nobody out. Runner goes to second, and the throw is down. Dykeman stays put. Runners in scoring position as Watson steals the bag. Pretty good play by Walls. As that gets past him, that's into center field, and LSU's on the board. Dykeman reading the throw, and he took a little bit of an extra step right there, too, because when that ball came out of Cal Raleigh's hand, it looked like he was sailing into center field. Watson can fly. He's just learning to be a little bit better base stealer. The jump was good. Even if the throw was there, he's probably safe. Just sailed a little bit on Cal Raleigh, and Taylor Walls just saved a run. 11 stolen bases now for Watson and Smith. Back to an even 2 2 count. And this one into right, it gets down. Dykeman's going to score. Holton comes in and throws. 1 0 in favor of LSU on an RBI single from Smith. We talked about staying inside with that fastball. It might be the right pitch, but instead Cole Sands goes with a changeup. It's almost the same pitch that Dykeman hit for the double. Ball is up. It's too good of a pitch up out over the plate in a one-ball, two-strike situation. The freshman puts a good swing on it. LSU scores the first run as Dykeman comes home up 1-0 here at the top of the second. How important for LSU off of the shellacking to Oregon State to feel good about themselves early here with a run. Well, LSU's got to like the run score. I mean, they're 31 and 3 when they score first on the season, you know. And, and let's be honest about this. Oregon State beat the brakes off LSU, you know, last. I mean, they, they just embarrassed LSU the other day. So you wondered what LSU team was going to show up. Was it going to be the one that was 27 and 15 before the run began, or was it going to be the team that was 17 and 0 before they lost the other night, you know? And you yep. can see there's no hangover from a loss. There's also no patience for anything going wrong. Mike Martin's out there. We already saw one of the relievers, Andrew Karp, head down to the bullpen. Yeah, it could be an early night for the bullpen. But now let's take a look at how both teams plan for success. It's brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And I think part of this is force your offensive pace, and it goes both ways. We've already seen it for LSU. Base runners on. It can be chaos on the base pass. Florida State, a patient offensive approach. 393 walks that leads the NCAA. But if you throw strikes, it takes them out of the ballgame. For both sides, get your starter to the sixth. It's important. Obviously, it's massively important to win a game. If you don't, you're done. But starter gets you to the sixth or the seventh. You could save a bullpen because to make a run, you've got to win today and then Friday and Saturday to get to the finals. All right. Oregon State already waiting for the winner on Friday. If they win Friday, they'll have the weekend, Saturday, and Sunday off and be in the championship series. Florida is in a similar situation. If they win their game, they will move to the championship series. Much tougher road coming from the loser's bracket, but it's uh, Coastal do it last year. LSU got a 1-0 lead. Men on the corners. Bo Jordan, the former Little League World Series star, now playing in the College World Series, the DH. Squares to bunt. Safety. Good bunt. Really good. They get the second run. They move Watson to home and Smith to second. You see that one coming, Ben? I didn't, although Bo Jordan has bunted a few times yeah. this year, but a little bit surprised. He's a very good first ball, fastball swinger. He's going to square around right here. This is one of the safety squeezes here. Runner at third base. 
Zach Watson's going to read it, make sure it's down. And once it gets down on the ground, he easily scored. Bo Jordan pushes that second run home. Fifth sack bun of the year for Bo Jordan, but that one drives in the second LSU run. And if you want to sacrifice, he did it perfectly. Yep. Brings up Michael Papierski, who has shown a lot of pop lately in his bat. Nine home runs on the season. The catcher out of Lamont, Illinois, and a ninth round pick of the Houston Astros. Sticks with a changeup, and Papierski was out in front of it. Some guys just have a little more uh, jump in the bat, and if you watch Papierski hit, he's he qualifies. Batted righty earlier and took one down the line and left for a home run. Back to back. First pitch change up, follows it up, doubles up. That one down and out of the zone, and Papierski couldn't hold up. Yeah, he was hitting it through the teeth of the wind at BP. There weren't too many guys doing that. You know, when LSU's run began, it was really Michael Papierski down at the bottom of that lineup. They kind of got it going. Don't be fooled by the batting average. It doesn't look great on paper right now, but he's been LSU's best hitter for a while now, batting 429 in postseason play. Behind 0-2. There was some question whether it was going to be Andrew Karp who started this game or Cole Sands. They elected to go with Sands. Karp is already here in the second inning up in Warman. Again, elimination game. So you lose and the season is over. One, two, Papierski up the middle. Tough play, no play. He reaches. So Matt Henderson go to try to backhand it. Not even sure he was going to get him if he fielded it cleanly. All going right for the Tigers right now. Matt Henderson's still playing with kind of a bad wheel, too. That right foot's been bulky for a while and goes down, tries to backhand it. The minute he doesn't get it clean, Papierski's going to reach, gets away from it. So he didn't hit it hard, just hit it in the right spot. And again, Ben, they were trying to go fastball in. And, and I mean, you probably got the outcome that you wanted. You got a soft ground ball, just put it in a place that nobody can make a play. Yeah, just bad luck. It was a pretty good pitch. Henderson charged with the error. Jake Slaughter inserted into the lineup tonight for Paul Maneri's LSU Tigers. He's playing first base. Good pitch. Real big chance here for LSU early to. Uh oh. Hey, real big chance. That's, yeah, he, that's uh, an early. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he cares about the chance right now. <laughs> He's not thinking about the chance, huh? He got a little artwork. Yeah, I like it that too. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Fall asleep around here, you never know what they're going to draw yeah. on you. Big brother went to work. <laughs> this ball is driven deep to left field. Luke going back. He is not going to get it. It is over the wall. A free run home run. And Jake Slaughter out of the nine hole gives him a huge lead. The freshman just enough to crawl over the wall as he blasts his third home run of the year. Yeah, hanging breaking ball. I'm talking about middle in belt out. And watch Jake Slaughter, the freshman, pull his hands in and put a barrel on that one. And that, my friends, is a weaver. A three-run shot. LSU up five to nothing now. Earl Weaver, three-run Jimmy Jack. And Mike Martin is already coming out in the second inning. There were two Cole Sands, the one that had pitched his last three games. Then there was the other one that had appeared in the prior six, where he had an ERA of 985. Unfortunately for the Knowles, it was the prior six in that 985 ERA. Five nothing. Mike Martin's club is down. First homer since March 15th for Slaughter. Welcome back, everyone. What a start for LSU and Paul Maneri's team. Up five to nothing. Big three-run home run from the freshman Jake Slaughter. Clears the bases, led to a pitching change. Andrew Karp, redshirt sophomore to Winter Garden, Florida, now comes in. You see his 
Stats at 6'3 and 210. 17 appearances in the ERA of just under five. And the Cubs selected him in the 34th round. Andrew Karp's dad actually played baseball at LSU in the early 1980s. Dan Karp. Now he watches and don't change your uh, television sets. I'm not even sure you adjust the color on your TV sets anymore like we used to when we were kids. You just you just sort of call somebody and say, what's wrong? Exactly. What's yep. going on? Cable company? Or, or you can Google it or whatever and right. figure out. Google. <laughs> they'll, they'll send you some directions or something. <laughs> My best friend, Mr. Google. That, that, is, uh, that was Kramer Robertson, who last time we saw him had long brown hair, and now it's uh, platinum blonde, and he steps to the plate. He's wondering when he can get on this uh, hit parade. We've got four of them. There was an error in there. He's hit it real hard the last couple of times up. It's the dude that went in the fourth round of the St. Louis Cardinals. The slider stuff. Show you that. Carp will show you a little bit of a cutter. Can get up 90 91. Change up two, and he can't go deep into ball games. 18 times the car's been in this year. 12 of those have been starts. Back to back breaking balls start Kramer Robertson. You're 0 for 9, you're hitting it hard. You ever go to the plate thinking, you know what? Third baseman's uh, even with the bag. I'm going to lay one down. I'm just going to change the way things are going. Not now, obviously, but you know, you're coming up to the plate. You're thinking that way? It would be a bad idea. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Three straight breaking balls. Well, Cole Freeman's first time up. This is what happened, a little ground ball. The speed doesn't quite, isn't quite enough. But now, now we're going to peek at the back. See, maybe there's a dent on the end. Paul Maneri out to look at it. Now, now we're going to take it to the committee. Everybody gets a chance to look at it. Now, now we're going to go search. Hadn't had to do this in a while. Let's see if we can find a new wand. So, Cole Freeman. It looked like he liked the one we just showed. Now we're swinging Kramer Robertson's back. So it looks like same model, just just different weapon. It hasn't really been a weapon. It works. The bat works. It's never the tools. Kramer may never get that bat back. <laughs> Kramer may be excited to prove, like, you know what? The bat actually works. Freeman with a double. Well, we had to get a new one this this at bat. So Kramer Robertson goes up, strikes that little handoff on the way back. Cole Freeman, let's see if you can do better. Well, he did do better. Break a ball that hung right in the middle of the zone and just peeks it right inside at third base. And if that ball gets past the third baseman, Freeman can moonwalk into second base with as fast as he gets down the first. So it's a two-out double for Cole Freeman and another runner in scoring position for LSU in this inning. They've already put five on the board. Really fast runner. Freeman was the guy in the middle of that play the other night where the right fielder looked up because Freeman was heading to second. He wasn't going anywhere but second base, but right fielder looked up, and that was a big difference as Freeman came running around the bases. Speed kills, and they got it on this team as Antoine Duplantis steps in. Two real good baseball teams that have been ranked very high. Again, Florida State was ranked like top five preseason. Ground ball right back to the pitcher. Pick up Mendoza. Takes it all the way to first, and that'll do it. But LSU, how are we looking? Sliding, running, smashing. Big home run gives them a 5 nothing cushion. We're only one and a half in. So, baby, come on. Be in good company. I know it's Jay Cohen. He's bringing us back to Omaha for more on the 2017 College World Series, including the interactive bracket and highlights. Log on to NCAA.com. Jay Cohen, we got Zach Brown crooning for us a little bit this year. Killing it on the country music side. 
Baseball, beautiful city here, Omaha. TD Ameritrade opened in 2011, and the elimination game, Quincy Neaporte feels like he's probably seen four innings already. It's 5 nothing LSU. He's batting for the first time tonight. And how does the approach, if at all, change for Poche with that lead? I don't think it can change right now. I mean, not in this situation. I think he was really spot on, which is unusual for him in the first inning. He's had his struggles in the first and second inning. I liked where he was, so for me, he's got to stay aggressive in the strike zone and continue to pound the strike zone. Q-Dog, Quincy Neaporte, I thought that was inside, and instead it's called a strike. He's calling the Q-Dog. I did. Yeah. Ben, isn't uh, baseball a lot about nicknames? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, you know how it is, KP. I mean, nobody's ever get really called by their right. real name. It's always a nickname for everyone. Oh, he could he could have taken it himself. Have you ever seen a for you? I was kind of looking forward to that. Seen, I don't think I've ever seen it. I thought we were going to see it that. That was that quick. Could, it could yeah. have happened. Freeman's fast enough. Neoporte doesn't run great. I really did. Given that we had some confusion over there uh, by Slaughter at first, I thought maybe. And Freeman could have done it. Picked it up and taken it all the way to the bag. But a good job, too, by Poche to get over there. Yeah, so Quincy Neoporte out. Cal Raleigh, the catcher. 205 pounds sophomore out of North Carolina. Got to get some base runners for Florida State. Change the narrative a little bit in this one. Poche is cruising along and he's got to get him in the stretch. And pound him the strike zone. Exactly. Got to get him in the stretch. I'll tell you this though, when he came out of bullpen the other day, mm. Poche was locked in. Pitch two and two thirds against uh, Florida State was very good. So, is there, Ben, I'll ask you for is there an advantage uh, having now this is the second consecutive game that you're seeing the same team? It usually doesn't happen very often unless you're a closer. Advantage for the pitcher or the hitter who has seen the pitcher? I think still advantage for the pitcher. I don't think Poche threw quite enough against Florida State, although they did get a little bit of a look at it. But I always feel like the pitcher has a little bit of an advantage the first time he faces someone. I would good. say, too, I, I think it's an advantage if you threw well. Right. Because yeah. if you threw well, the other side, I mean, there's the, the level of confidence is down a little bit. Level of confidence on the mound is up a fair amount. If you don't throw well against somebody, you got to spin it back around. Then it's it's kind of going back to the drawing board. Poche doesn't have to go back to the drawing board. Two and two thirty, two and two thirds innings the last time out against Florida State. Didn't walk anybody, struck out two, and just looked composed and in control the whole time. That brings up Drew Mendoza, the first baseman, having a good. College World Series, one for three with a couple of walks in RBI and two runs scored in the fifth game of this College World Series. Mineola, Florida. You talk about quick hands. This guy's got them. There's some pop in that bat as well. He's going to hit a lot of home runs. Yeah. Yep. Already has one here. Yeah, so back to the nickname thing. In just a little while here, uh, Big Game is going to join us right here in the booth. Mm -hmm. You know who Big Game is? Of course I do. Well, well, that's Brian not, Howard. No, it's Big Game. Oh. oh. So Big Game Brian Howard, the star for TCU the other day, he's going to sit and join us in the booth. And by the way, as soon as we brought up the Q-Dog, he went KP. He's not Ben McDonald. He's Big Ben. We're going, yeah. Be, I like that. I mean, when did that start? Who was, was the first one? Remember? Probably in high school. <laughs> I thought you'd be like two. Oh. <laughs> that it just started I mean, right I got there. called a lot of things other than Big Ben, like tomato stick, because at 6'6", six, six, about a buck 65, I was kind of slim <laughs> running around out there. I thought it was Some the guy called me a thermometer with numbers one time on the basketball court. That's how skinny I was. You thermometer know? with numbers. Yeah. The so big thermo. I like they meant big. I guess it was tall, you know, because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't very big. I got called the other stuff. <laughs> Tugboat. <laughs> Tugboat for a few years. Mm. The big thermometer. Yeah, thermometer with numbers. That's right. Run around on the basketball. Well, thermometers court. have numbers yeah, anyway? That's, all of them do. That's why I, I, I'm that. trying to change it. Let's call some, the know, big some, thermometer is yeah, good. We, we don't need fire right back. I like that big thermometer. That's right. <laughs> Well, Big Game is uh, is in the booth, so you stood next to Big Game. Big Game's a little bigger than the Big Thermometer. Big Game is listed at 6'9", and he's every bit of 6'9". He may be a bump taller than that. That one's got numbers, too. Yeah. 
warm. Ben from LSU is telling us this. He's laughing at the idea that it's warm here. Hot, humid. <laughs> It's yeah. not, it is warm for here, you know, but in Baton Rouge, it's a little warmer. Left center with some carry on it. Watson going back at the wall, and that is gone. There's the pop from Drew Mendoza. Got up in that wind tunnel, and it kept going and going, and Mendoza's 10th of the year, second here in Omaha, and they're on the board. Now, the wind helped. This ball was hammered, though. And this is this is a name to remember because Drew Mendoza, just a freshman, is really starting to come into his own. So Poche, who had breezed through the first five, looked like fastball on the outside part of the plate. Mendoza just goes down, gets it. You get backspin with this win today, it's going to carry it and carry it and carry it. I think Watson, when he started, thought he had a chance to catch it. It ends up going about eight eight rows deep and. The Seminoles are on the board in one swing. You could see it when it got about left center yeah. field about halfway there. It really just kept on riding that wind. Yeah, the wind gusting. If you look at the flags in center field, gusting now out towards uh, left center field. And big to get one on the board after giving up five. So Poche unable to have the shutdown inning. That brings up Matt Henderson, the second baseman, as you take a look at the flags. This ball to the right fielder, and it stays up long enough for Dykeman to make the catch. A couple of home runs we've hit already. We'll be joined by big game. Ryan Howard didn't give up any home runs. Certainly make a name for yourself here in Omaha, and a few guys have already done that. Fiedo and Singer, how about the starters for Florida? 2-0 and 064 ERA, and we have 20 strikeouts between those guys. They are 2-0. K.J. Harrison at the first Grand Slam in TD Ameritrade Park history. And this dude who we talked about a little while ago, Big Game Howie they call him. I don't understand why we didn't go with Big Game Brian. Seems to make a little more sense, uh, but he joins us now to explain it. Good to have you here, bud. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's great to be up here. What a view we got going on. You got here. a good, yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah, good view. view was better on the mountain for you the other day than it is up here, yeah, though. Yeah, it wasn't a bad view. Uh, I liked what I saw. Yeah, I think. <laughs> uh, it's a nice place to pitch, you know. I mean, the wind's blowing out a little bit today, more than it does normally here, but, you know, you normally just fill up that strike zone and let them hit it and see how far they can get it going. How about tonight? Good ball. Yeah. Left field gone. The park's playing a little different than it normally does here. Uh, I've been here four years in a row now, a little humble brag, but. Uh, Not too many people can say that. <laughs> way to drop that in there. <laughs> Had to get that going early. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, normally it's, it's tough to get one out of here, and uh, we've seen two tonight, uh, a little lefty poke one out the opposite way. That was pretty impressive to see it carry out there. It kind of caught a second win there up in the air when it carried out to the outfield, so that was impressive. Pretty good hitter up is Greg Dykeman. He doubled his first time up. This was uh, part of that five run inning. He's right away back up in the third inning. So big game Howie, what, what about big game Brian? Don't we want to go with some of that alliteration? I know, I, does, I guess big game Brian does have no, a little no. bit better ring to it. But okay. big game Howie uh, is what's stuck. Uh, I like it. Uh, I think it's more they're making fun of me, but uh, because I haven't done it all year, you know, I don't do it in the regular season. I don't, I don't know why that is. I wish I could figure it out. That would be nice. That's to be good, able by to, the way. Uh, so yeah. if, if, they, if that says that underneath your name, Anybody? career in the NCAA tournament, 6 and 0. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You try Who cares about the rest of the season? You can name whatever. You, you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah, at that point. appearance is <laughs> six. Oh, it's, kind of, it's like the Smoltz shilling thing. You show up at the big, big time of year. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you uh, if you ask me if I'd rather be good in the regular season or the postseason, I I guess I'd choose the postseason. Uh, what, do, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? Because I mean, it's been that way. I mean, last year you threw them on their back. This year you threw them on their back. Uh, is something change? It probably started my freshman year because I had thrown eight innings uh, in my freshman year, and we played a 22-inning game in a regional against Sam Houston State. And uh, it, was the, it was the 11th inning, and I was sitting in the bullpen. I looked to my left, and there was nobody there. I looked to my right, and it was a bullpen catcher, and I was like, yeah, probably going to pitch tonight. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> haven't pitched in four months at this point. Uh, and I went out and threw – I almost uh, doubled my – uh, career innings total in one night against Sam Houston in a 22 inning ball game. So, I mean, I guess I've just always kind of thrived in that moment and I enjoy it. And uh, it's good to get it going in this time of year and, and, and compete. And you also realized that since there was only a bullpen catcher out there when you came in the game, there was nobody else who was coming in after you. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little thin down there in 22 inning <laughs> game. You're not really built for that, especially in a regional where you got to come back and play again the next day. And, uh, 
but it's fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was a fun way to kind of, you know, start your career because no one knew who I was. I was pitching Tuesday night blowouts until then, and then, you know, you get a chance to get your feet wet in the postseason. It's kind of carried over since then. Speaking of thin, this uh, shot we have in the booth doesn't do you any justice because it almost looks like you're the same height as me and Kyle. I'm like 5'7". <laughs> Kyle's fairly big, and you, Watch you look out. That was right over his head. You wow. tower over everybody, including Changer. Ben McDonald. Yeah, i I've I've been tall for uh, for a while now. I'm starting to get used to it. Normally, there's two questions that go with any new person that meets me. A lot of times, at a gas station. Not, not have you always been tall? No, it's uh, <laughs> it's how basketball. tall are you? Of course. And yep, do you play basketball? Well, we know how tall you are. Six no. foot nine. And I, oh, I keep seeing 185 pounds. I have got to clear that up again. I'm not 185 pounds. What do we got? We're, we're at 204. Fluctuates though. Could be could be 199 right now. <laughs> <laughs> from today's heat. But it, it ain't 185. <laughs> well, from throwing yesterday, normally it's about six-pound swing after a start. 3-2, good pitch. Carp gets him to chase. Carp's look pretty good. Okay, now, now we, we, we got to talk about something. Here. Okay. What's going on? we got to talk about it. we got to talk about this. All right, so, oh, so here so we go. we, we got a little, little tutorial oh, here. That's, it's good. Emotion's a good thing. Emotion's a good thing. It's totally fair. But <laughs> but we, we've got a guy here to help us. All right. So, all right, so my guy Ben back on. here. My guy Ben back here is going to teach us how we do this. All right. Let's see it. I too like big game Howie. I've been tall for a while too. Yeah. But I tell you what, <laughs> I love his emotion on the mound. But one thing we got to talk about. Too, we got to talk about the hat tip a little bit. When you deal like he dealt the other day and you get 12 punch outs, it's got to be a slow walk off the mound. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, you got to milk it. Let everybody get going. I'm okay with the hat flip around. I'm good with that. But I want to slow you down, man, all the way back. And then maybe just before, just kind of right before you get to the dugout steps, you go down. Then you can just flip around and do your hat thing. I'm good with that there. But take your time and milk it all the way back. Love the energy, though. I can't control that part of me. <laughs> I, I don't have any control over that. Have it's you? like it's someone else. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Mendoza. Big game like will it. stay with us. Motion's a good thing. I like it. I like it. I like it. You're out. That was great. You're a rock star. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Good luck the rest of the way. All righty. This NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. I feel like we got shorted there. Yeah, that was a quick inning. We're getting very funny guy though. Oh, he's the best. We we had him on TCU Texas series this year. It started then he started doing color. Then he took us to break. I mean, he was he was phenomenal. He, yeah, he, he's a funny cat. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, he said I've been tall for a while. I said I bet you have it. Six nine, <laughs> tall for a while. He never really answered whether he played basketball, but anybody that's six nine plays basketball, right? Ah. Yes. You played basketball. I don't think a lot of people remember, Ben. You not only played baseball and were a tremendous baseball player and a first pick in the draft, but you played college basketball for Dale Brown. Yeah, I actually went to LSU on a basketball scholarship, you know, with the intent of playing both, of course. And I loved basketball at LSU. I, I knew it probably wasn't going to be my ticket when I got over there and the boys could actually dribble it up the court faster than I could run. So I knew at some point I was going to have to do something else, and, and I picked up some, you know, velocity on the fastball by right. the end of my freshman year, and I kind of knew that might be my chance to make it if I was going to make it. Which one did you like better? I actually liked basketball better, uh, and we were talking about this before. You know, I was probably the kid, the, the ADD kid, before yeah. there was medication for it way back when, and so I kind of bounced around. It was constant action for me up and down the court, so that was always fun. Sometimes I ran in the wrong direction, but I just like running around. But basketball was actually no, a, a very no. competitive sport for me. I love to compete. And I know you too. You, you got your son in a lot of things too. But I, I think it's important for kids these days to try to play multiple sports. I think it teaches you how to compete and teach you how to be a better athlete. Because some sports come easy for you, and some you really got to work your tail off at. And that was me in basketball. Well, the reason we're showing that pitch, that was a real good breaking ball, and it looked like it broke in late for a strike, but it was called a ball. And now Poche has got Stephen Wells with a full count. Those are two pretty good ones back to back. Break them all to me seemed like it was still a little bit up. I know Poche definitely wanted to call. Then they try to go fastball on the inside part of the plate. So from 1 2 to 3 2 here to Wells. That one's wow. way outside. So they're going to try to chip away. They got the home run from Mendoza in the last inning. And in this elimination game between LSU and Florida State, LSU got themselves a five spot in the second inning. Big, big home run in that one. And that was. Uh, off the bat of Jake Slaughter, the number nine hitter. We've seen a lot of home runs from the bottom of the order so far at the College World Series. The winner tonight goes to two and one. The loser goes home.
And, of course, tomorrow we find ourselves in a similar situation, another elimination game. Double elimination format here. You're going to lose twice. And when you lose twice, it's all over. Yep. Oregon State and the Gators of Florida, 2-0 to start. Here's Tyler Holton, who pitched the other day, and now he bats. He's the nine-hole hitter. So, a little juice now. Holton just 12 starts, but does have two home runs. Yeah, I don't mean to dismiss it, Ben. I think that's a real interesting, and it's a it's a conversation piece for kids and parents and travel teams and all those who want one sport started like 10 years old. No, and every coach you ever talk to, no. and it's like a question I ask everyone for that reason, being around kids all the time. Mm -hmm. All your college coaches, Corbin, these guys here, football players, hockey players, I want them all to be able to do something. Ground ball, Freeman to Robertson. Got upended there a little bit by Wells, and there was going to be no throw, so they get the force. But they all want multi-sport athletes. We're talking to Paul Manera the other day, and he specifically talked about recruiting quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. right. He's got four quarterbacks on this team right here, so Holton kind of rolls over one right. That's a long way to backhand it right there, too. Freeman. There's nothing wrong with that slide. Yeah, I just think he you learn. Straight. You know, you learn how to compete, and you got to be competing. And, and, and a lot of high school coaches, you know, unfortunately put a lot of pressure on kids to play one sport, you know, right. and they feel like they're missing something. But I don't see it that way. I don't always think more is better, you know. I think you've got to learn how to compete. you got to learn how to – I mean, basketball helped my agility. Being a tall kid growing up, without basketball, my footwork wouldn't have been as good as it was. And so I got to run up and down the court and fall down a bunch of times, but it helped me. Hi, Hopper. This one to Freeman. Did they turn it? Yeah. Yes, he kept his foot on the bag. Jake Slaughter, home run hitter, and now Mr. Stretch over there at first base. Uh, that move now. Jake Slaughter, kid that plays some shortstop in high school, gets a start at first base. He's already hit one of the seats, and right here, almost lays out to save a double play. 5 1 LSU. Welcome back, everyone. The big thermometer, Ben McDonald, pitching for the LSU Tigers in 89, the number one overall pick in the Major League Baseball draft, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2008. Pitch for the Orioles when he was in the major leagues. Dealt with some shoulder crankiness, and that was unfortunately the end of what uh, was on the way to being a terrific career. He made the transition, though, obviously, from college, and a lot of these guys are going to be doing it in the next couple of years. What, what are some of the biggest challenges? What are the biggest changes, the biggest differences? Everybody's really good. I mean, that's what you notice right away. I mean, the guys you used to strike out all the time, the way you could dominate games at some time, you notice when you get the, the higher levels you go up that uh, that was the first thing that struck me. Like, there's no outs in a big league lineup. They right. all can play. They all can hit. And the consistency, and more importantly, the, how quickly the good hitters make adjustments. I mean, the best ones will make adjustments from a bat to a bat. Some guys, it took you from series that's to series. It. But that's what I noticed about how to be successful is you got to be able to make adjustments because they will adjust to you quickly. And I always said, that, you know, you got the, the first time you see a club, the first time you go through the league, the pitcher has the advantage. It doesn't take long for them to gather information and know what you like to do, and then you got to be able to adjust back when they do. Who was your kryptonite, dude? Who was the guy you just Joe couldn't? Carter. Really? Yeah. He was a lot oh. of people, so. Yeah, Joe Carter could hit a little bit. I had an unusual career, the fact that I got left-handers out better than right-handers eight of nine years because I could always throw a two-seam fastball down and away. That was my arm side was my best side of the plate, so I could always throw a two-seamer down and away to a left hand. I got a lot of ground balls that way. Uh, but Joe Carter's one of those guys, great fastball hitter. You get behind on him, and, boy, he can really turn it around. Short sample set so far here, but Mr. Carps looked pretty good since coming in out of the bullpen. He's kind of slowed everything down. I see that. Now it's a leadoff walk to Bo Jordan here in the fourth. The cruise through the third. Struck out Kramer Robertson in the second, the first guy that he faced. So he's struck out three already, but a leadoff walk here to start the fourth. So take me through it too, Ben, because a lot of these guys are going to be doing it. So as you're uh, watching the College World Series and you're following guys like Dykeman, but certainly guys like we just had in the uh, big game, Howie. And Fiedo, what what are some of the what are some of the more interesting sort of stories, places you've been, experiences you had on your way uh, up to the majors? You know, going to the Alaskan Summer League was cool for me out of college. That was the first time I really was away from home for the first time. You know, so that that was a lot of fun for me. And I think, you know, just learning 
to fail for the first time. You know, when you have a lot of success and, and you go, and for me, I didn't have the luxury of learning how to pitch at the minor league level. I guess it was a, a curse and a blessing all at the same time I spent 10 days in the minor leagues and I got called up and right. year I pitched at LSU. So wait, but you, so you grow up in LSU, you don't ever leave Louisiana, no. and, and you go off to the Alaskans, have you, yeah. you've never been, had you been to Alaska? No. no, no, I hardly ever been out of the state at that time, you know, and, and I, I'm shipped off my freshman year and, uh, it's different, you know. It does. First of all, what I noticed about Alaska, it doesn't get dark there during the summer. Right. Like, I, you know, I had to put tinfoil up on the on just to get sleep at night. You know, it was unreal. I was like, this place it never gets dark here. Not a blanket. You just went with tinfoil. So the first time you you know you grow you grow up for a while. You know, I mean, you get away from home for the first time, and so it was a lot of fun. And um, you know, you, you you're with some college buddies. You start learning how to pitch a little bit more, and uh, no. you come back to school. You feel like you're a, a little bit of a no. man. Then you know, you grow up mentally, physically, and of course, a better pitcher too. Well, all right, so what did you see in Alaska that you hadn't seen before? Fishing was great. Never caught a king salmon before, so I got to do a lot of fishing. That was cool. It was also cool for me being an outdoors person to actually see moose you know, yeah, yeah. And, and on the side of the road and bear. That was really cool, too. So it's kind of right up my alley, although it never really warmed up in Alaska. Kind of a cool place, like a high of 70 during the day, which summertime, I'm thinking, yeah, Baton Rouge is a little bit warmer than this. <laughs> a little bit. So it was a, cool, it was a cool summer, you know, and so. It was a lot of fun. Is that kind of what there you saw? Well, uh, kind of, kind of, <laughs> similar, look. yeah. Same color. Sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> now, LSU's got uh, the leadoff man on, and Bo Jordan, Michael Papierski, a couple of blunt looks. And, all right, now, I, I know the aggressiveness. I get it, but 2-0 when we're fighting to find the, or fighting to find the strike zone at this point for Carp, and that was clearly a hit and run based on the swing we saw from Papierski. Could be and probably should be three and zero right now. Mm -hmm. Ninth home run of the season came in the fifth inning of Game Two. Here he's got two in the postseason. I got you, pal. I got you. you want a ball or not? Where would you say you learned more about pitching in college or through the? <laughs> the 10 days in the minors. Definitely I learned more in the big leagues because in college, Skip Bergman called every one of my pitches. And then I signed August 19th. I'm in big leagues September the 1st. And I didn't know how to pitch. I knew I had good stuff. But I didn't know how to use it. And so it was a learning process for me. I had a young catcher in Chris Hoyles yeah. who yeah. was learning the big league hitters too. And it was a rough time. It was a lot of go home and bang your head up against the wall wondering why you couldn't have success in trying to call your own game. <laughs> call strike three. Kind of what, I, your and first game, wasn't it a – didn't you pitch a – yeah, you pitched nine my innings, first right? start was a complete game shutout, and it was all downhill after that, I can tell you. That was just <laughs> luck, you know, and so uh, – it, it was fun, you know, but, but the coolest thing that happened to me is Kyle Ripken became a good friend of mine, and in my second year in the big leagues, he came to me and Chris Halls and said – you know, after a game, he said, you guys are struggling, aren't you? And I said, yeah. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. He goes, would you like some help? <laughs> I said, well, sure, I'd like some help. So not many people know this. It's in Cal Ripken's book. He called every pitch I threw that oh, year from shortstop. And that's the whole I, year? The whole year. That's how I learned to pitch. And it was the funniest thing ever is that I would be looking in at Chris Hoyles at home plate, waiting for the sign. I see Chris looking over my right shoulder where Cal Ripken's standing at shortstop. And the way he held his glove and where he touched was the pitch and the location. And he said, listen, I'm going to do this for you, but it's got to be between me, you, and Chris Hoyles. That's what it's going to so be. Nobody else. Nobody else. Know. He said, too many guys get traded and word to get around. They'll start picking my signs up. Right. So, Junior, and then we would sit after a ball game, me and Chris and Cal, you know, with an adult, adult beverage or two, and we would talk about why we called certain pitches in certain situations. And that was how I learned how to pitch walking through with him. Did he eventually – Seed the duty of calling your games to Hoyles? Yes. Did they eventually? Yeah. After a full year of doing it, he eventually said, you know what, I think you guys, but listen, I'm still going to always have input. I said, perfect. Because, I mean, how could you argue with Cal? Right. I mean, Cal was one of those guys that, you know, understood the game, really watched and paid attention to every hitter. He knew their tendencies and what they liked to do. So he would always come and jog in and call timeouts and say, hey, I think you guys ought to do this, 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 and this, you know. He'd do that for anybody else. You know? Yes. He did. I, I think he tried to, and, and he did, and, um, you know, there were some guys that didn't know he was doing it at the time, and, and when they found out he was, um, they got upset at him, and so he quit doing it, and their ERA went up about a run per game afterwards, you know. And so he helped he helped Hoyles a lot along the way. Look at where uh, Kramer Robertson's back foot is. It's extended. It's right on the white. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's sort of over the white a little bit. He's been, he's been climbing on top of it with that back foot. Carp scuffle now because, I mean, that last inning, he had missed a spot. 
in this inning, he's, he's had a little bit harder time finding it. Pierski gave him two strikes. I mean, a hit and run on a pitch that was out of the zone, and he fouled a bunt off. Carp came back and finished him off, but he hit slider with, or hit slaughter. I'll go 2 0 to Kramer Robertson right here, who has to have the 2 0 green line, I would think. Lined out his first time up, struck out his second time up. And you get a good look at where his feet are. He's, uh, he's huge into those are basketball shoes, so yeah. the whole basketball thing's come full circle. He nice spikes attached to the bottom of basketball shoes. Got about 100 pairs of them. Good pitch. If you're going to have a friend in the major league, Cal's a good guy to be a friend with. Yeah. I mean, for whatever reason, you know, he we kind of took to each other a little bit in the ways. I think he saw a lot of me and him, the way he got called up at a very young age and having to learn the game a little bit, too. So he was a really good guy. Slow roller to the pitcher cart. Quickly to first. Robertson is retired again, and he advances the runners. Jordan's down at third. Slaughter is at second. Over the story of the Cole Freeman baseball bat. Slammed it into the ground, and then uh, they went and checked the bat. Looking for a little dent or something, so we think there may be something there. And then the bat was approved. I mean, disapproved, so that didn't come back in. So Robertson gave him the baseball bat. Robertson hasn't gotten a hit yet. Freeman uses the bat and gets it a works. double. It works. Works. Never blame the equipment. Right, Ben? Never blame the equipment. Never blame the equipment. How many times have you gone out with somebody else's clubs and shot a really good round? You know, you always <laughs> thought it was yours. How many putters like me have you bought over the years That's thinking it. it's the equipment? That's why I can't make a putt. <laughs> I went you through like five putters in one year. <laughs> it's got to be the putter. I can't make a six-footer. Wrong. Yeah. Freeman, too, just like Robertson, it seems like this is something they're trying to do is uh, take away the inside of the plate, force Carp to really go in and maybe hit him. He got that one out over the plate, sailed it to left, and it's caught out there for the third out. Luke makes the play. They don't get any this time. Paul Maneri, the LSU head coach, is coming up when we come back with 2 3 4. You up for the Knolls. Welcome back to the city. Kyle Peterson calls home. It's Omaha, Nebraska, the heartland, and the people in this city embrace the people that come for this College World Series. All sorts of development downtown, and TD Ameritrade has seen huge crowds so far in this College World Series. The greatest show on dirt, they call it, and in this one, LSU has got a 5-1 lead in this elimination game. Jared Poche has uh, held Florida State to only one hit. So he's been outstanding, and now we head to the bottom of the fourth inning with Florida State. Send it up 2 3 4. So Dylan Busby, Jackson Luke, and Quincy Neaporte do up. Busby's got some big time pop in his bat as well if you haven't seen him play. Third round pick, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Swings wildly at that one. There are some challenges that Poche presents to this team. That, that, that change up to the righties, there's a lot of chase in them. Uh, Mike Martin Jr. told us today because they walk a lot. He said, no, we, we strike out a lot, too. The one thing with Poche, too, is, is I mean, it just feels like you can do about anything in any count. And it doesn't mean it always mm -hmm. works, but you can't cross anything off. And with a lot of guys, you can cross off certain pitches when you get to certain counts. You can't do that with Poche. Yeah, I mean, he can pitch backwards as good as anybody can. And I'll tell you what else he'll do. He'll fool you. He'll kind of cruise along at 84 to 88, but he Zip. can't. That's right. He yeah. can reach back after he throws you a couple slow ones. He can reach back and grab a 90 or 91. 2-1 to the junior from Sarasota, Florida. Busby in there for a strike. So, Poche, 38 wins, tied most in the LSU school history. He pitched in relief on Saturday through 30-some-odd pitches. His... his bullpen would have been on Sunday. Is there anything to the timing for a pitcher? Like the bullpen's usually Sunday, so he in a sense gets an extra day of rest, but it's, it's not your regular kind of calendar. No, but I, I think with where the pitch count was, I mean, he went two and two-thirds. Um, I mean, to me, I would have been surprised if it had any negative effect on what he's doing today. And you got to think, too. 
I mean, a guy has 38 career wins. He knows that the next loss means you're not going to wear this uniform again. And, and if, if there's any more adrenaline or anything else to grab, you would think he's doing that tonight. Good fastball right there to finish off Busby. He's a very good fastball hitter. And he's now struck him out twice today. Graduated with a uh, degree in kinesiology. So he knows the body. And it hasn't let him down tonight. Ah. Force one in over the inside part of the plate. Jumps ahead of Jackson Luke. Lined right at the first baseman. He caught it. Jake Slaughter for the out. Oh, Sla Slaughter, right place, right time tonight. He kind of had to peek, make sure he had it, though. That one got on him in a hurry. Yep, there it was. Poche wasn't sure he caught it. It almost sounded like it clicked, like it hit the yeah, ground I and heard into that. the glove. I think Poche was unsure, too. He's hustled over the first base just in case. I'm not even sure Steve Madden they had a great look at it. He was blocked a little bit by Slaughter. I'd like to see Quincy Niporte get a hold of one. This is one of the more prolific home run hitters for Florida State. Porte looks at that one in the dirt, and there's the ball right there. We had talked earlier about keys to this ballgame. I think it's one thing to watch moving on. Uh, Jared Poche has been very efficient against an offense that doesn't allow many guys on the mound to be efficient. 45 pitches through three and two-thirds right now, and if you're Florida State, you've got to push that pitch count up. You've got to force Poche to go deeper into counts. Yeah, and you know, Poche, he is the guy that can get on a roll. He can really, I mean, we saw him throw a no-hitter early in the year. You know, he can get spot on and really, because you look at the stuff, and it's, sometimes it's a comfortable 0 for 3, but he really knows how to mix his pitches and does a good job. Hadn't seen many cutters yet. It's just mostly breaking ball, changeup, and it's almost like he's kind of saving a pitch like you'd like to do as a starting, because once you go through the lineup once, you go through it again for the second time, you want to have something in your back pocket if you can, and maybe show him a third time. I think that's when you're going to start to see a few of those cutters show up. Four. Poche and or Papirski. Now he's in a 3 0 hole with two outs to Quincy Niporti. Drafted in 16 by the Padres, the 14th round, couldn't come up with the uh, right money, so he went back to school as a senior, graduated, said it was the best decision he's ever made. So, Ben. Kyle talks about efficiency, like what just happened? You know, mechanics sometimes, you know, and you'll see it occasionally on every pitcher. And Poche's been known for this through yeah. his career where he can kind of cruise and he'll get in a groove and all of a sudden it's just like it's just lights out. And then all of a sudden he'll lose it for a batter or two. You know, he'll throw seven, eight balls out of nine pitches. You see Papirski just right in the middle of the, and this ball, not only is it not a strike, he cuts it, comes around it a little bit. Well, and the, the other thing of this too is where the misses work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing if the misses are, if, if you're just missing off, you're just missing in the same place. I mean, the misses in that at bat, we, we, we kind of had a little bit of everything. Bounced the fastball, missed way far glove side had one that kind of sailed arm side Good time Alan Dunn just to go out and try to slow the mind down a little bit right now. and he had a very similar start you know in, in the super region against Mississippi State, Mississippi State. he yeah. cruised along yeah. for a while and then all of a sudden he had a couple of batters where you know he struggled so strikes but we expected him to kind of get back into it well he didn't and then all of a sudden he was out of the ball game real quick walked for the first six he faced gave up a two run home run He's facing a guy right now that could ride one out. The guy after him already has. Cal Raleigh can run into one. Switch hitting catcher. Now hitting from the right side. He has eight home runs on the year. Five balls in a row. Neoporte is not a huge threat, obviously, to run down there at first base. He's a bigger threat to run into one. He doesn't do it. Now Raleigh, the catcher, 205-pound, 6'3", sophomore. I'm not taking one here. No. In many cases you would, but I am not taking one right here. Yeah, careful here. I am. Because you got to think you're going to get a heater. Yep. See, Papirski just trying to calm Poche down and say, hey, throw me a strike. But that strike's left middle in and up a little bit. Could go a while. 
He took it and was right down Broadway. But finding the arm slot and managing your emotions. This ball is hit to center. Maybe off the end of the bat a little bit and Watson's underneath it. That'll do it. So Poche settles down. We head to the fifth inning with LSU in the elimination game up 5-1 over Florida State. Back with Florida State head coach Mike Martin and coach Andrew Karp comes in and settles things down for you. How was he able to do that? He's throwing a very good cutter and slider. He's a guy that is, has gotten better with each outing. We just hope he continues to improve. He's going to be a great addition to our staff next year. In an elimination game, you are trying to get this one. What do you tell these guys to get something going offensively? Well, when it happened, we were, there were 24 outs left, so there was a lot of baseball left, and we got one of them back. We just got to keep grinding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Carl. Thanks, Laura. Is there anything that Mike Martin hasn't seen other than that strike three that led to a run the other night, which he acknowledges he'd never seen before? But man, he can tell guy, you stories about everything. That is just beautiful. Everything about him, man. I mean, the history, the wins, the way that he approaches a game like this where you give up a five spot and immediately says, when it happened, we had 24 outs left. That demeanor just stays the exact same. I thought it was interesting today talking to. Mike Bell and his son Mike Martin Jr. just about what it's like to be around him what it's like to be coached by him and they immediately pointed out the teaching moments that you see over the course of a ball game where he'll walk down to the end of the dugout grab somebody point something out that just happened because Lord knows he can teach this game. Mm. Antoine Duplantis in the top of the fifth fouls one off. Handsome man, 1965, Mike Martin with the Florida State Seminoles. Ended up coaching first base that year on their trip to Omaha. And then has since been back 16 times he's taken this team at the College World Series. He's one of only 18 to play in it and subsequently coaching it. It's been an interesting year for the Seminoles. They, they for a while, looked like they weren't going to get into the NCAA tournament. Like a lot of teams, they dealt with a ton of injuries. And they flat out weren't playing great. And then all of a sudden, Louisville series came up, the ACC tournament came up, and lo and behold, here they are. We were talking about it today. They went to Louisville. And Louisville was the number two team in the entire country. They had not lost a series the entire year. And honestly, Florida State had to win that series. They absolutely mm -hmm. couldn't be swept, but they probably had to win the series. They have a chance to get into the tournament. Forget one seed, host anything else, to get into the tournament. And they weren't even a lock to be in the ACC tournament. They beat Brennan McKay. They win two games at Louisville. The third game's rained out. Then they beat Louisville again in the ACC tournament, come back, beat North Carolina in the final, and ended up hosting. Then in the regional, get beat game one. Tennessee Tech comes out and beats them. So I had to fight all the way back through. At one point, down a run, two outs, two strikes in the ninth inning. Busby hits a ball off the center field wall, and <laughs> here we are still playing. These FSU players, guys, feel like that Louisville series was the turnaround for their season. It was the confidence they were looking for to solidify what they thought they already knew, that they were a really good team. And Jackson Luke said before they started that series, he looked at Quincy Newporty. Good job there, Laura. Antoine Duplant just fouled off a handful of pitches, and he delivers the single. So he looks at Quincy Neoporti, guys, and he says, hey, we're the ones who have nothing to lose. Let's just go in here and play like we know we can. All the pressure's on Louisville, and it worked. A little reverse psychology there, maybe, but doesn't matter how. It does feel like there was always, I mean, just, just talking to him and reading the quotes, there was always the belief, and at some point, you're, like you say, you start to doubt it a little bit, but when it starts to turn, you're like, yeah, this is what we were capable of. We, yeah. we were a top 10 team preseason. Top five. It's not like, yeah, top five. I mean, and offensively, I think many looked at this Florida State offense as potentially one of the most dangerous in the entire country going into the season. Well, they had I mean, the number one offense coming into this College World Series out of any of the eight teams here as far as runs per game go. That bad average, but because of the walks and the on-base percentage and what they do. But listen, they went 24-6 and six down the stretch. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about an amazing run. And really, these two teams kind of mirrored each other in a lot of ways. LSU wasn't quite like that, but had to get hot, too, to go ahead and be a national seed. Both teams took off in May. 
Dykeman to third. Busby to second for one to first. Whoa! Well done. Good arm by Henderson as he throws out Dykeman. Watch how quick the transfer is for Henderson right here, too. It's a changeup. The Dykeman's all the way out in front of it. Kind of squibs it to Busby at third base. So this ball's spinning weird when it gets into his glove. Third baseman, you're not used to getting a ground ball this slow off a left-handed bat. But that transfer by Henderson clears himself from Duplantis, who can really run. Knows that Duplantis is going to be there in a minute. But gets away from the slide strike to first and that is a big double play for a dangerous hitter big time play good arm from Matt Henderson ha! the thing about all these teams you got a bunch of shortstops all over the place you know high school superstar shortstops that end up on these teams they have to go to different positions only one one can play that six hole it's a good arm Matt Henderson just showed Zach Watson the freshman from Baton Rouge Swing and a miss, and this may be a good inning for Carp after it looked like he was in a little bit of a trouble with his control. He won't throw you much straight now. I mean, cutter, change up, fastballs had pretty good movement. You know, and, what, and what's strange in this college world is we've seen a lot of this. The starter's not done well. Whoever the relief guy is that they were thinking about starting in several of these games have done really well. And coaches, of course, second-guessing themselves. Well, why didn't I start this guy? Because Carp was a guy that was kind of listed. We thought might one be, or the other. Yeah, we, we thought might be the starter. That one wasn't straight. But he's out with a strikeout. So a good comeback inning after a leadoff single. Look at Carp coming off, barking off the mound. Trying to get that Knowles offense going. With LSU head coach Paul Manarian, coach, a lot of offense early for you guys. How can you continue to tack on later? Uh, we we kind of let a couple innings get away from us there, Laura. The inning before we had runners on second and third, Cole Freeman smoked that ball. He probably hit it too hard. In the last inning, we got a leadoff hitter on base and then hit into a double play. So we just got to, we're, we're getting, having some good at bats. We just got to finish off the innings. And what happened with that bat of Cole Freeman's? Well, I guess the bat got flat sometime in the last couple of days, and they took it out, so that's part of the rules. Well, he has been using Kramer's, and I guess it's worked there, right? Okay, it's better. <laughs> thanks, Coach. All right, Laura, thanks. Drew Mendoza leads things off, and uh, that's good news for Florida State. Mendoza homered his first time up, hit a shot to left, got into the wind tunnel and kept going. He rips another one. This one into the gap in right. We'll see if Mendoza makes a big turn, and he does, but he holds at first. It's a confident hitter right there in Drew Mendoza, and the leadoff man is on. Pretty good A-Bs right there, Ben. I mean, home run to left on a ball that got elevated backspun into the wind, and then this time first pitch fastball on what is not a terrible spot. And Mendoza just covers the entire play, drives it right back up the middle. Right decision here, too. There is no reason down four at this spot to take any chances to get thrown out at second base. So two hits in the game for Florida State. That guy has them both. Henderson's the second baseman. He rips one, and that's going to get down. Back-to-back -back singles. You guys have seen enough baseball, even though it's 5-1, to one and Maneri sort of touched on it. We've let a few innings get away offensively. We've got a baseball game here, huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, first ball, fastball, hunting. Both Mendoza and Henderson push through. First ball, fastballs are both of them out over the plate, and they're not taking any right now. They're jumping all over because, you know, the scout report again, Florida, see a lot of pitches, take a lot of pitches, try to work the count a little bit. Not so much this inning, and all of a sudden the Knowles, first and second, nobody out. You know, I think it's interesting, too, because if you come into this ball game, and if you're Poche, and you would think that the scouting report from LSU standpoint is pump fastball, I mean, First pitch fastball, pump it in there. They're probably not going right. to swing at it. Well, that hasn't been the case. Florida, Florida State has been more aggressive early in the count in this game than we've seen them be most times. There's another one, and this could be a triple play. Five. Nope, bounced it. Out oh, at second wow. base, and we'll see if Freeman's okay. Yep, as he held the bag, but a Taylor May double play ball on the bouncer to Smith. First look, I thought he was safe. We'll see what it looks like right here. He was, I mean, it's close, but he was safe. Yeah, I think he's in there, too. What a play by Cole Freeman, though. I mean, his ball played it like a first baseman. Is Freeman kind of reaching out and grabs that ball in a short hop. 
about a 5-4 double play. You could not have asked for it to be hit to a better place. And I'm sure there's a lot of Florida State fans, college baseball fans, baseball fans watching, wondering if expanded replay will ever come mm. to the College World Series. We've seen a handful of plays, close plays, at bases, which, given the circumstances, College World Series. It would be all for it. That would be all I would for it. That is a heartbreak for Florida State right there. And they're not the only one that has been victimized by it. We've seen some tags high on legs when the foot's on the base. Mm -hmm. Something I think that uh, would be wise to consider understanding all about pace of play. How about, a, how about a negotiation? Let's bring expanded instant replay and limit the amount of mound visits ha! for catchers. I'm fine with that. A little trade-off. And those are hard plays. I mean, listen, we're looking at it in super duper slow exactly. motion, and we can barely right. tell, you know. I mean, at full speed, you can imagine. But we've become so accustomed to instant replay. All right, let's right. see. Was he safe? Was he no. out? Two more. That's a really good play by Freeman. Yeah. Because he's got to keep the foot on the bag the entire time. And, and I mean, it allowed him to have a chance. He bobbles it at all. Obviously, he's safe. Yeah, and he caught it and, of course, sold it to the umpire yeah. really quick. Got the call. Tyler Holton, right field, deep. Back goes Dykeman. He's at the wall, and he stays there and makes the catch. Holton, the pitcher, put in for his bat tonight, and a little wind shift leaves that one a few feet shy of the wall. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase everywhere. The Capital One Cup trophy is making a stop right here at the Capital One Fan Fest in Omaha. Capital One annually awards a combined $400,000 in student athlete scholarships. And the Capital One Cup trophy to the best NCAA Division I men's and women's athletic programs. To see where your school ranks, visit CapitalOneCup.com. That was kind of a huge inning. You got two men on, you ground into a tailor-made double play, mm -hmm. and uh, you could argue the base runner was safe at second, and you miss a two-run home run. Could have been a three-run home run by a few feet. Well, and you could clearly see what the approach was. First pitch, fastball, single. First pitch, fastball, single. First pitch, fastball, put into play. Ended up being a double play. Stays 5-1, go to the sixth. Josh Smith, third baseman, leads things. Off for LSU, rips one, but it's foul. Andrew Karp has been very, very good. He's given Florida State a chance in this ball game because remember he came in after it was just an LSU ambush. Five runs on four hits, comes in, strikes out Kramer Robertson, gives out a double, gets out of the inning. Since then, it's been all zeros. Three and two thirds, two hits allowed, walked just one, struck out five. Two and two. LSU's a bit undermanned. We saw Eric Walker start the other night and had to come out. Felt some forearm pain. This one to hit down the line, it's going to get into the seats. It does not appear as if that pain's going away. So unlikely to see Walker again in the College World Series. Yeah, that of course is going to you know hurt LSU a good bit if they make that deep run in this thing, because it appears as as you mentioned, Walker will not pitch again. Palmen area that night sort of diagnosed it without much research at that point as uh, hoping it was a muscle fatigue. But again, anytime you're dealing with the arm or any part of it, as you guys both know, uh, that oftentimes ends up not being good. Yeah, and Walker, just a freshman, the workload this year. I mean, a lot of starts. He stepped in the rotation from week one, you know, and, and really threw a lot of innings for a freshman. So you wonder if there's a little fatigue there going on. I got to talk to him a little bit before the game, and he said, you know, I, I felt a little something, a little tightness. You know, we could go in a bullpen workout, and, and I felt great when the game started, and I felt great all through the third inning, about the third pitch. Warming up in that inning, he said, I felt something kind of tightened up, and it just never loosened back up again. Mendoza, uh-oh, he bounced it on the way to first. Uh-oh. Smith fell down, Sorry. and he gets back he to the that. base, Sorry. and he is safe. The ball was dropped, but a lot of traffic over there at first. Mendoza made a nice scoop of it, but Carp 
A little late getting over there, and then the throw was really hard to pick up. Just led him too far. Mendoza made a good play to glove him. And Carp's there in time if you hit him in stride, but he just led him in a little bit too far. Carp has to go down and get it. Josh Smith got a little bit lucky right here because Henderson just got back. Mendoza goes full stride, lays out, and the ball gets away from him. But that was it was bang, bang, getting back to first base. And I think the flip may be a little bit too far of an underhand flip is what that was. Normally from that distance, an overhand. Dark. Yeah, a little more of a dark. If you watch the flip, I mean, look how far Mendoza is away from first base. It's, it's hard to be accurate with a flip, you know, from some 35 feet away. I'd rather see him just kind of throw it a little over. He's got to put it, reach way back and get a little extra to kind of get this over. That is a long underhand flip and just wasn't very accurate with it at all. And you're right, Carp, a little late getting there. Mike Martin out there now and... Uh I think Martin's got a couple years left. Next year, he gets 32 wins. He becomes the all-time winningest coach yep. in college baseball. You played Skip Bertman, Mark Marcus. You played for two of the greats. He's going to be the all-time winningest coach in college baseball history. That's a hard thing to say. You know what? This is what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah this is this is all time. So. Augie Garrido, we saw last night, just 31 wins ahead of Mike Martin right now. Gene Stevenson, the former head coach at Wichita State. Mark Marquis, who hung it up this year. And Jim Morris, Mike Martin's former assistant coach down there. Yeah. 1,566 wins. Those are some of the best this game has ever seen right there. Uh, you you got to wonder. I mean, this 2,000 has an interesting ring to it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Runner goes and pulled foul. LSU staying aggressive. They sent Smith. You say it's got a good ring to it, is that what we said? Clearly, it's a number that nobody has ever been to. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that uh, the game is better when number 11 is in it. That I am certain of. He's just one of those guys you love to talk about. And you could tell the passion how much he just loves and still loves the game after so many years. Going again. Bat flies towards the third baseman. The ball goes to Carp, who throws Bo Jordan out. That's a two-seam fastball and a hit and run to where Bo Jordan is just fighting to get some piece of a bat on it. And that's pretty good to get any piece of this, Ben. Yeah, you can surely the catcher Riley rocked to the outside corner. This ball runs up and in, and look at this hit and run. You got to swing at it. You got to try to hit it on the ground. And Bo Jordan does an outstanding job of pulling everything in yes. and really just throwing the bat at it just to get a piece of it. Watch this, hands in tight, and that ball. If that's wood, it's going in a million pieces. <laughs> we we talk about this a lot. We talk about guys pulling their hands yes. in. Yes, that that is the best description of pulling your hands in right there. Just everything you can to try to get some piece of the bat to it, and ultimately did his job. He swings through right there. There's a pretty good chance of Smith throwing out at second base. Instead, he's standing there now in scoring position. For Michael Papirski, this one tailing towards the corner and left, but it gets into the seats. Let's watch those hands. A two-seam fastball. Riley's sitting up right in the middle, and now this thing has big-time run. Watch right now. We're going to pull him in as fast as we possibly can, and you can see that back arm. I mean, that back arm was as bent as you could possibly mm -hmm. get it. Just doing everything he could to get some piece of that Just metal bat to it. it. That's right. Luke still in left field, shaded way towards center field as opposed to covering the line and left. Papirski pulled one down the line the other night, batting right-handed. Fouls another one off. What also makes Mike Martin unique and a treat is that in a game in which you're dealing with teenagers, his ability to still relate to the athlete, I mean, he's been relating to athletes for a long time. Yeah. It doesn't appear as if there's anything about having 11 as your coach that turns kids away. That's a testament no. to him. No. Ouch, Papirski right I down after that one time. hit him. Take your time, I got you. I'm walking, you know. 
You were quizzing him today on, uh, you know, games and years, and he was ready to count. He could give you by count, like every pitch. I always think it's so interesting to talk to coaches, and, and, and you'll talk to hitters and pitchers the same way. They can remember intricate details about certain things that others couldn't. I have a feeling if we went up to Mike Martin and we said, all right, 1989 right. series against Clemson, and he'd go bang, 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 and roll everything off right away. It's just it's that type of mind. Mm -hmm. It just thinks the game different than most people. You guys both played for legendary coaches, so give me the one aspect of the coach that you remember the most as far as the impact it had on you. What did Bertman impart on you? What did Marquess impart on you that you were like, yep, I can use that lesson forever? You know, for me, it was consistency. I mean, it, and he, he was consistent for 41 years. Um, it was it was done the same no. way at the beginning. I mean, to the point that it was virtually the same briefcase. I mean, the briefcase that he'd, he'd walk into, right. well, you had him on the Olympic team. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was about the same thing. I mean, the scout reports are taped up in the exact same s spot. Practice, everything is consistent. Constantly in the back of your mind here, and if you're not early, you're late. If you're not early, you're late. Just all these different things that I wasn't the most consistent when I was a freshman. I know that. <laughs> um, that is that is one thing that I absolutely learned from Mark. When you're talking about coaches, like I, you know, attention to detail, doing the same thing, repetition, over and over and over, and even when you got it right, continue to do it every day to make sure when you did try to do it, it would be right again. You know? I would imagine as a teenager, you're like, we get it. So many of the things that, that you didn't understand when you were 18 or 19 or 20 years old, you understand later in life. Right. You know, you understand why you did that drill. Why did he make us do this in situation? Oh, you know, right. it, it doesn't always make sense when you're young and you're immature, but it makes sense later. You know, the one thing in, in talking to Mike Martin Jr., and we were asking him about how do you guys get this offensive approach, he said, we drill it. That's, that's how we do it. We drill it. I mean, we make sure that, I mean, when we practice, when we not even just, like, simulated games and games, batting practice, it is drilled in. It doesn't vary. No. It's, it's the same no matter what drill you're doing. And it doesn't matter who you are. They drill into Florida State. Patience. All right, here we go, Ball's go. not in the zone. Don't swing at it. They've walked 393 times coming into the game. By comparison, LSU had walked 278. Blew it by him. Good high fastball. You guys mentioned the relatability that Mike Martin has to his players. Their favorite story happened a year ago at the ACC tournament. They were in a three-hour rain delay, and Martin was trying to fire him up, and he's given this really exciting speech in front of a table of snacks. And suddenly, he picks up a bunch of granola bars and chips and just yells, eat really loud <laughs> and so now if they ever need something to motivate them or they just want a good laugh they'll pick up some snacks and <laughs> scream eat, eat at the top of their lungs here's Jake Slaughter laid on that one he fouled into the seats well in telling his stories today we, I saw a sign of Mike Martin 11 I hadn't seen and I've seen him for you know a lot shorter than you but it's been about 10 years that he's been bouncing back and forth. He raised his voice. He got real animated in telling a story. And at that point, you could really relate to like, oh, I can see how he gets to these guys. Yeah, you could tell that wasn't the first time. No. <laughs> I mean, it, when it needs to be done, it can be done. That coaching voice came out. Carp doing a good job mixing speeds. Trying to navigate his way through the sixth. He's only given up two hits since he's coming into this ball game. He has given Florida State a chance. And you heard 11 say it. He'll be in the rotation and an important part of it next season. 0-2 to Slaughter, who's gone deep tonight. Rolls one over to third. Across the diamond for the third out. Carp keeps him close. We'll see if Florida State, who's been knocking on the door, can walk through it this half. Tim Kirchin dream tonight. You got Pill and Hill on the mound. Jay Bruce, 19 homers this season. The Mets got trounced last night. Everybody talking about Bellinger. He keeps hitting homers. Last night, Seeger, solo shot, two run shot, three run shot, came up with the bases loaded, nearly had the grand slam. He would have had it all covered, and he sent it to the track, and that's where it ended up. But it's Rich Hill and Brett Pill. Hill Pill Show coming up with Eduardo. Boog Shambi and Rick Sutcliffe following our game. 
I heard you guys the other day debating snow cone or snowball. Snow cone. Yeah, snowball. No, it's not. That's not what it's called. No, all no, I can no, tell no, you, no. All I can tell you, is back, no. uh, back home, it, like you're not it, home says, right now. it says snowball stand. No. It doesn't say snow cone stand. That's not where we're at. I, I know, but snow cone. When, when you grow up, you use where you grow up, and it's never been a snow cone. It's always been a snowball where I'm from. Shaved ice, just yeah. no, that, that's not even in the running. No, you I don't even know what that is. Cover that up with a tarp. That's not... No, that's a lot of ice on it. Did you see that thing? It weighed five pounds. <laughs> I like the way you were defiant, Kyle. No, 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 no. no that's not. You're not even home. <laughs> not he here. It's a snow cone. No. <laughs> ben, a few years ago, we had a discussion about uh, those chocolate sprinkles they put on top of ice cream, and back home, they call them jimmies. You ever hear that before? No, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sprinkle. It's incorrect. It's like exactly. some people say pop, right? This is pop. what it is. No, I'm just so, asking yes. if he had heard. I didn't and say. Pop is right. I never used pop before. We, you know what we call it? A cold drink. Bring me a, bring me a cold drink. I don't know. What, I never that's, heard of pop. That's pretty, that's pretty open. I went to ended. Jamestown, New York many years cold ago, drink. and somebody yeah. said, do you want a pop? And I was like, what is a pop? Sure. Upstate New York, yeah, that's yeah, a soda pop. Yeah. Yeah. Cold pop, drink. Pop oh, is, give me a drink. Yeah, cold drink. Okay, so, let, so here's what we got. Okay, we got pop here. Yeah. We got snow cone here. What was our third one? Sprinkles. Sprinkles here. Sprinkles. All yeah. accurate. It's sprinkles, that's, yeah. That's, that's what we got here. If you go up to the northeast and you say sprinkles yeah, or jimmies, they will <laughs> accept it. You, you're implying that here, where I'm selling the... Congeniality of Omaha folks. Look out right back up the middle. We got a glove well on it. Done. Cole Freeman. Oh, he threw it in the dirt. He had himself a gem and Slaughter couldn't pick up. See how big that is right now because this is a part of this Florida State order that could do some damage. Busby hit it on the button, but they had him played perfectly. Freeman shaded up the middle. You can see him in the shot right now. One hopper. Poche gives a little kick save attempt. They're in plenty of time and had plenty of time. I think he rushed to throw Ben when he really didn't have to because you don't have a great runner going down and Busby did not get out of the box well. Yeah, he did, didn't appear in the picture. But a free out and one of the themes this College World Series has been errors and walks kill you. Right now Florida State's made two errors. LSU's made one. Seventy-four mile changeup. As you start thinking about later in the game and Zach Hess and how many innings he can give LSU if needed. But here's the numbers: the teams that issue more walks are one and nine, and the team that commits more errors, zero oh and five. Coaches clamoring for clean games and uh, hard to come by. You can take that graphic to any level of no baseball. doubt, right there. I mean, that, that's one that travels. There's Hess. So if you're Florida State, you know, how soon do you think you got to take advantage of Poche on the mound before you get now. into the arms? Now? Yeah, I, I think if you're Florida State, now's the chance. Luke. Fair ball. It's called by the third base umpire, Troy Fullwood. And they are in position to take advantage and a bad throw back into the middle of the diamond. Good hustle by Freeman, though, who tracked it down. Otherwise, that's a free run. Not sure where Antoine Duplantis was throwing it. It's a right call, too, because there was chalk on the other side of the bag. There didn't need to be chalk on the other side of the bag, but there was, and I think it had a little bit different spin in keeping it there. Watch out of the corner of your screen. Dykeman shows up right at the end. You got a right fielder coming all the way in. He's, got a, he's not there yet, but watch. Dykeman comes all the way in. He saw that throw was starting to get away and saw that everybody else was a little bit out of position. That's, it might not seem like that big of a deal, but, but you can have something to do on every play. And for Dykeman right there, how potentially he could help is to get to a point to where if there was a throw that went Ari, 
he could be in a spot to make a play. We've always said if you find yourself standing around on any play, yeah. you're, you're not doing the right thing. And, I, you know, I think maybe Slaughter should have been trailing a little bit better on that. The middle infielder has got to go in case a ball's got to go down the line. So Slaughter should have really been there, the first baseman for LSU. Quincy Neaporti back to left, and back goes Duplantis, and he's going to make oh. the catch on the track. Both runners advance. They get one. Wow, they have come close on a couple of balls deep to the track. One in right, one in left. Lee Porti had hit that. It would have been a one-run game, but he comes up again just a couple feet short. Just thought he might run into one today. And I thought he did when that ball came off the bat because the way this wind is blowing right now, you could backspin anywhere deep to left field. It feels like it's going to blow it all the way out of here. But... The plant is at just enough room. A few feet in front of the left field wall. It'll go as a sack fly, so the Knolls get one back. They get one back. They got a base runner at third base in Jackson Luke. And they'd love a clutch hit. Two outs from Cal Raleigh. Been a lot of big two out hits in this College World Series. On the ground, hard to short. Watch the Robertson back, Watch the back. throws him out. They chip it away. They got one in the second. They get one more in the sixth. It's a three run lead. Welcome back to the College World Series, LSU and Florida State. 5-2 now with three innings to go. Then we're going to turn it over to the crew out west. That's where Eduardo Perez is. He's made his way to Dodger Stadium for the Mets and the Dodgers. Of course, uh, we got Ben McDonald in our booth here, LSU guy. we got Eduardo Perez, Florida State dude. Eddie, you've been knocking on the door. You've been watching the game? I have. I've been watching it. I missed the first inning, and uh, when I got to the booth, Right when I got there, I saw the home run, and I saw it was 5 nothing, and it was a quick 5 nothing for LSU. But again, you said it, Ravi. You said it earlier. There are a lot of mistakes. When you make errors, the team that makes the most mistakes and gives up the most walks usually ends up losing. Critique the broadcast. What do you got? You what do you more of? of it? it's, it's, come on. I don't know. Big game. Fire. Big game was good. I wanted to see a little bit more big game. I saw I saw Ben breaking okay. him down over there in the in the demo area. Yeah, that's good, huh? Um, yeah. I don't know about the big Q. Uh, Abby talking about Q, giving him nicknames. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll yeah, see about good. that. You taking again. notes? <laughs> Write this stuff down. Write this stuff down. He's and, and, and what, thing, I'm hoping. I'm I'm just hoping. I mean. We've been already in Omaha for like a week, and we have yet, I don't know, Carl, Ben, have you guys been to uh, to Kyle's house? I haven't been there. I haven't been swimming yet. No. Oh, you, you know, well, you know what? Eat? Do you know what happened today? What yeah, happened? you know what happened today? We all were at Kyle's house. Really? Well, you know what a little, happened today? A little backyard barbecue. Yeah. You know well, what happened today? I brought Carl's two and a half, two and a half. Uh, <laughs> belt with me right here. There it is, yeah. right here. <laughs> just for you to don't be afraid to go out and buy some clothes, all right? Now that you're out, just go buy some clothes. Come back, look presentable when you show up. It'd be wonderful. What do you mean? Your clothes isn't presentable? Oh, no, hardly. <laughs> Eddie, you got, Tyler, you got Tyler Pill and Rich Hill on the mound tonight. Are you going to be all right with that? Uh, it's going to be a little confusing, but there will be uh, Rich Hill with his curveball. He has to be able to throw it a little bit more. Uh, more effectively in the zone to get that chase. He's been struggling a bit with it. And then uh, we're going to see what we can get out of Tyler Pill. He's a, he's a young man that does have a good two-seam, four-seam combination. His changeup needs to work for him today in order to get out these really good lefty hitters. And, and uh, when you talk about Seager, when you talk about Bellinger, this is a pretty good, a really good offensive lineup, a young lineup also. Yeah, we're watching Gary Sanchez all over again with Bellinger. You, you got him going deep again tonight, and if so, how many times? Well, I'll tell you this right now. It's not going to be – I think if he gets one, you imagine if he gets one and before he gets to uh, 200 at-bats, it would be the first player to ever do so. That would be 23 home runs in less than 200 at-bats, and uh, I think that's impressive on the part of, of Bellinger to be able to do. He's not a big guy, but, boy, does he create some torque. And uh, he doesn't get cheated up there. All right, All right Eduardo. Well, we uh, walked ourselves into a little delay. We had an umpire get injured. He's been replaced by Danny Collins at second base. And we uh, wish you luck tonight in the game. All right, we'll be watching. All right, and uh, Ben, I hate to say this, but go Knowles, baby. Go Knowles. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We got a good one. <laughs> Eduardo Perez, part of our telecast, coming up after our game. Kramer Robertson pops it straight up. And it may have literally blown into the seats because the wind has turned again, and now it's blowing back in a little bit.
And Collins moves into second base. Mark Yule, guys, previously at second base, he said his knee popped out. So uh, they're dealing with it. The medical staff here looking at him and hoping he's okay. You guys seeing anything from Kramer? He's really one of the better players in college baseball, better hitters for LSU, and that is causing him not to have success. He's hitting the ball hard when he's hitting it. I'm not seeing anything. I mean, he's chasing a, a few bad balls here and there. And Kramer, you know, throughout his career has done that from time to time, especially his freshman and sophomore year. The consistency you started to see last year was when he started laying off some marginal-type pitches and getting in some plus counts. And that looked confused. I think it's one of the reasons right now where you see him swinging to the first pitch almost every time he goes up there. Because there's this feeling that if I don't, I'm going to get into a down count and go 0-2. Yeah. He's hit some balls on the button, but... I mean, this is bad again. Swung at the first pitch. And yeah, he just you never recognized yeah. that. He never recognized. He thought that was a fastball up and in the entire time, and it come back at the last second. Tried to emergency hack it there. He's just in one of those funks right now, you know. When he yep. does find the barrel, it goes right to somebody. Then there's some really good pitches made on him. Freeman hits it on the ground hard. Henderson had a retreat, but he made a good play, and Freeman is retired. So I hope Cole Freeman didn't like that bat that the NCAA decided to take out of the game earlier because it's gone for good. Randy Bruns, the NCAA secretary rules editor, tested it again, did the ring test on it, did determine that it was flat. So they took it up to this room where they keep all the bats that are deemed unusable in game. And I'm imagining, guys, it's like a treasure chest of college baseball up there. They said it's like a graveyard of old bats here. Hmm. Have you seen the old bat room? I haven't seen. You think they have a black magic in there? They may. Remember the old school oh, black yeah. magic? Is that the best bat ever made? Black magic, the old gray. Ink, I bet they know, do. Same time. So black magic, and, and the then old, it was the gray and green. Yeah, with the green writing yeah, on it. Yeah. 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 Those two. Those were the bats. They were, those were like Fred Flintstone bats. I mean, the ball <laughs> came off of those things. <laughs> Two and zero to Antoine Duplantis. Oh. LSU got five in the second, and they have not got a run since. That's when Carp came into the game. Ha! What was it? We thought maybe we'd see two after Laura talking to Mike Martin, maybe two more from Carp. He's got an Indian two thirds since. And from my standpoint, it didn't show any signs of really slowing down. I, I don't think there's any reason to go to anybody else at this point. No, I mean, LSU has clearly not figured him out. I mean, the ability to throw the fastball on both sides of the plate, the fastball's got a lot of run and sink to it. And then we've seen some good breaking balls and some good changeups to go right along with him. 3 0, all the way back to 3 2 on Duplantis. Lined over the head of the shortstop. Antoine Duplantis back to back hits, both singles. So he's aboard. Look, Mike Martin's been at this long enough, and he's coming out of the dugout. And it looks like uh, that's going to be it for Carp. I think this is, this is to get the lefty-lefty matchup here. Alec Bird, the lefty, on his way in with Greg Dykeman ready to hit for LSU. And the Tigers still lead at 5-2. Two, two outs here, top of the seventh in Omaha. Driven deep to left field. Luke going back. He is not going to get it. It is over the wall. A free run home run. And Jake Slaughter out of the nine hole gives him a huge lead. Five nothing after one and a half. Florida State gets one in the bottom of the second, one more in the bottom of the sixth. And we get ourselves a 5 2 game. Drew Mendoza hitting the ball hard. Two for two. He's got a solo home run. And the third pitcher of the night for Florida State is Alec Bird, the lefty. Well, and Alec Bird is on because Greg Dykeman is due up. So the lefty on and senior, who's been used a lot of times this year as this lefty-lefty matchup guy. This is his 36th appearance. That's tops on this Florida State team. All have come out of the bullpen. 32 and two-thirds, 32 hits. You see the high walk number 
Because you're going to see a fair amount of breaking balls, especially in this situation against Dykeman. Dykeman, the second round pick of the Oakland A's. Doubled his first time up, struck out, then grounded into a double play. And quite a story as he returned to Baton Rouge. He got drilled in the head preseason in a scrimmage. Broke three bones in his face. First time he'd ever been hit in his face. Missed about 48 hours, came back, and he homered in his first at-bat back, and then he homered in like three of his first five games. And when he hits it off that neon bat of his, it flies. First meeting, Eichmann against Bird had that go-ahead RBI single. Got that neon bat early in his LSU career. Didn't know if he'd ever use it. Started using it, started hitting with it. Never gave it back. Late on that. In fact, he had three of them. He's down to two of them because he gave one to a little boy that was dealing with some of the effects of the terrible flooding. Oof, he recognized that curveball. Yeah, I mean, Dykeman's had to do this a lot this year. A lot of the games have specialized bringing some lefties in and watch him sit. Fastball first and a breaking ball right on it. I mean, just miss that one. So sometimes the course of the bat tells you what a guy's looking for. And that time it looked like he was sitting on the breaking ball mm -hmm. because the fastball, the first fastball that he swung through, he was late. Really late. I would go back to that fastball here. The intimidator, Alex Box, he hit a home run over it. About 486 feet. Someone will see at the next level. Real good. Good change by Mike Martin. He brings Bird in. Down goes Dykeman. Hill's running out of chances here. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Welcome back, everyone. The old market here in Omaha. Tremendous restaurants. Great walking area. I want to remind everybody, Thursday, 7 Eastern time on ESPN, the 71st NBA draft from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. The big trade, the Sixers have the number one pick, the Lakers second, the Celtics third for now. You can also watch every pick. They're announced streaming live on the ESPN app. You can hear an Omaha kid get his name. We'll hear an Omaha kid get, hear his name. Good call tomorrow. Justin Patton, Omaha North grad. Creighton Blue Jay projected to go in the first round tomorrow. Was working right here at the College World Series this time last year. Amazing, huh? He, and he came quick. Yeah, I mean, redshirted his first year, redshirt freshman year. He's a Big East freshman of the year, and now potentially a first round draft pick in the NBA. Cool to see for this city. Yeah. No, it's not. You go to some of the basketball games here? Oh, yeah. Do you? About all of them. All the Creighton basketball games you yeah. go to? Do you? Coach Max got them going, man. Yeah. He doesn't give me enough shots on a golf course, but he's got him going in there. <laughs> Coach Max, a man of demand, too. Huh? I mean, he gets calls all the time. He's staying right here. Ben, LSU basketball guy, as we watch this ball come in. This was, I haven't seen that one in a while. Yeah, I, I'm not sure even what pitch that. I could have as a fastball or a breaking ball. That caught grass. I, yeah, that hit, that hit like eight or ten feet out in front of home plate. Mendoza rips one just foul. Boy, he's on everything. I think like Mendoza looks outstanding. First time up, of course, a home run opposite way to left center. Then he pulls the ball in the hole, so he's going foul yeah. line to foul line, and those are the dangerous ones for a pitcher. Yeah, that ground, that uh, grass ball may not be a bad pitch. Yeah, only if he swings at it. <laughs> but those are the dangerous hitters for a pitcher because you're not quite sure what they're looking for. You really don't know where to go to get them out. Ripped. Center field, a couple of steps back goes Zach Watson. He he squared up another one, but he is retired. You ever play Shaq in basketball? No, I I, I have not. I have not, and I don't know that I want to. No, I would. That, that's a big man. We had a reunion many years ago, ah, about five years ago. Stanley Roberts showed up, and he was yep. just as big sure. as, as Shaq. I used to go watch those two. Uh, go at each other their freshman year. I mean, you're talking about two elite athletes. And Stanley Roberts used to get the better of Shaq regularly. Much better player at the time, you know. More polished, I would say. But Shaq obviously developed into a 
once in a lifetime kind of player. Matt Henderson, shortstop, Robertson. Fires to first, and Kramer makes it two down. So the greatest show on dirt. We are losing teams slowly. Tonight's winner will play Oregon State Friday at 3 Eastern time on ESPN. They're going to have to beat Oregon State twice. So if you beat them twice, uh, that would equal half the number of losses they've had for the season. They've only lost four times. The Beavers are 56 and four and look like a machine. We had a couple of games against really good teams. Vanderbilt beat them badly, had the series against Vanderbilt. And what they did the other night. No. Yeah, I, I'm impressed with them. First time I've seen them, I tell you what, Madrigal at the top, you know, at five foot seven. I, I, you know, I wanted to see him. I was a little bit skeptical and I can tell you, he's a ball player. Yeah, he's going to play for a while. He's a ball player. And the pitching, of course, is, I mean, we talk about a team that has a team ERA, which I couldn't believe either. Yep. The best we've seen in 40 years now in college baseball. It's, it's just amazing to me uh, what they have, the way those guys pitch. I'll tell you what got me the other day is the way the ball game started. So, Quan first pitch of the game, bunt single. Second pitch of the game, hit and run. They single to score Quan later on in the inning at Oregon State to just keep piling them up. Another quick quick inning for Jared Poche who has now cruised through seven. Eduardo Perez interview with Michael Conforto from Oregon State when we come back. Well that culture also took you to Omaha. What's your fondest memory of Omaha? Uh, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is incredible. Um, you know I think more specifically uh, we took a, a two to one game over over Indiana and Kyle Schwarber was on that team um, and that you know, that was an elimination game. Uh, came down to the wire. Our pitcher, Matt Boyd, who's actually playing for the Tigers now, uh, won a full game and uh, kept that great offense, you know, to one run. And, uh, you know, just getting that win with my teammates was, was incredible. Didn't end up winning it that year, but uh, it was a great ride. Michael Conforto, the New York Mets, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and we are done here. He had quite the career at Oregon State. He was Freshman hitter of the year, the Pac-12 freshman of the year. Then he got him to the College World Series the next year. He had 328 with 11 homers and 47 RBIs. Came to the College World Series and raked. He was 7 for 16. And speaking of raking, while that game is on deck, LSU gets another base runner here to start the eighth inning. Yeah, Zach Watson continues to hit just a freshman. Wasn't even a starter for LSU when the season began three weeks into the season. Hardly any at bats at all. Paul Maneri inserts him on a Saturday because Antoine Duplantis got a little bit of a sore arm out in center field and put Watson in the ball game. What does he do? He goes three for four against Wichita State, hits a home run, and hadn't been out of the lineup since. Last couple of times Watson's been on. They've got some action going with hitting runs or steals. Here's a bunt, and that one is by the pitcher. Bird goes back and retreats to make the play. It's pretty good athleticism by Bird. Ball was bunted by him, but he about faced and got it. When you know that ball's going to check up, but still sometimes it's adrenaline to get you to run past it. But Bird, a good job to barehand that thing, kind of drove it into the grass, made sure he had a good handle on it, flipped it over, had plenty of time. So Conforto coming up, he was also a participant in the Little League World Series. This guy, Bo Jordan, coming up, he and his twin brother, also Little League World Series. So those guys, Little League World Series, College World Series. Of course, the goal is the Major League World Series, which Conforto has done. Cal Raleigh slow walks it out to Alec Bird. Here are some of the other guys that have been here to Omaha and then gone on to the Major League World Series. Conforto, Schwarber, Benatendi with the Red Sox. Bregman, of course, the Astros. Swanson out of Vanderbilt. With the Braves, the guy you think about who went here to literally World Series is Finnegan from TCU, same season. Immediately, yeah. Well, the Red Sox signed their uh, first round pick today. How long do you think before Hauk gets to the major leagues? And I, I, Ben, we've seen Tanner Hauk a lot. Yeah. And I know that the, to me, Tanner Hauk got nitpicked a little bit too much in this draft. Um, and I guess it depended on the day that you saw him. But I, I think Tanner Hauk is. That velocity continues to come back. Half the right-hander from Missouri. Um, I mean, it is a bowling ball sinker when it's yeah. right. I love this stuff. 
I did too. I mean, last year, I uh, talked to some of the players going around the league, and you know, you had all the first rounders in Sheffield and get over Mississippi State and Hauk. I said, all right, who's got the nastiest stuff? Who do you not want to see again? And they all said Hauk right away because it's a boring fastball that just kind of sinks and runs up to 93. You know, and he got a little bit behind this year. He didn't play any fall ball. He needed to rest the arm a little bit. I think when he came back for the spring, he didn't see quite the same velocity, the same stuff, but he would see flashes of it at the time. But six foot four, wiry frame, you know, going to fill out a little bit of the stuff. It reminds me a lot of Kevin Brown kind of stuff. I a agree. hard, boring sinker with a Good slider. You know, he's working on a changeup. When that changeup and that third pitch comes around, I think he's going to pitch I for agree. 10 years in the big leagues. I, I totally agree. Anytime you can compare it to Kevin Brown, that's something. Guys, today Tanner Houck was assigned to the Lowell Spinners, and he threw 94.2 innings at Missouri. So the Red Sox said they really don't want to load him up with too many innings at Lowell, but he will be able to learn that five-day routine, which, as you guys know, is one of the adjustments you have to make there in Pro Bowl. Lowell Spinners just outside of Boston, Massachusetts, up the road. So get a chance to get to used to the climate up there as well. Summertime in New England. You know, I think that's a good point, learning to get on a five-day rotation. You know, because obviously in college ball, we're on a six-, seven-day rotation. So all of a sudden the workouts are a little bit different. The bullpens are a little bit different. The weight workouts are as well. Mike Martin's pointing now with numbers who he wants out of that bullpen. Yeah. Trying to <laughs> relay the message. This where the old phones and the uh, dugouts work. Drew Carlton, step on through the door. And we'll step right out and be right back. Loving, loving, living that sweet life. Ain't got nothing, nothing but a good time. Little black of July Christmas tree. Sure sounds pretty damn good to me. Going, going, crazy as we want. Till we get a little back, boys gone. Tremendous atmosphere outside and inside. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Certainly has a, a fair-like atmosphere. You get a lot of tailgating going on. The weather's been beautiful. The fan base is out in full force. Eight of the 64 teams come to Omaha. And after the double elimination format gets rolling, you start to lose a few teams. And after tonight, we will lose one more. LSU leading Florida State 5-2. to two. Drew Carlton, the next pitcher for Florida State. As Mike Martin probably senses he cannot give up another run this late in the game, we haven't seen Zach Hess, but you do get the sense that after Poche, you're going to get into some serious arms coming out of the bullpen for LSU if they want. Yeah, and, and for Mike Martin, this is his closer, and, and there's no reason to save him at this point. I mean, ball game on the line, you get a runner at second base with just one out. If you're going to get beat, I think you'd rather get beat with your best arm in there, and that's what Drew Carton's been really this entire year out of the bullpen for Florida State. Five and four with seven saves and a 192 ERA. 35 appearances. Yeah, you're going to see a good fastball, too, up to 92, be 88 to 92, both a two and a four-seam fastball. Got a cutter and a regular breaking ball. Show you a changeup, too. Not many closers with a four-pitch mix. Aware of Watson at second base. Bo Jordan was the guy that uh, basically took a swing off of his chest his last time up for a fielder's choice. Bat ended up going into the third base area. Saw that scoreless inning streak, so that's on the line with Jordan up. Ha! Well, Jared Poche, who once again now in line for his 39th career win at LSU, would be the all-time high. Careful with that one. Yeah, back to back breaking balls. Not doing a whole lot. It looks like more like the cutter that he throws. Not a whole lot of break to it. It's kind of sitting there too, almost backing up right in the middle. Bo Jordan swings right through that one. No! Oh! 
Good idea. <laughs> See the movement on that two seamer at 91 miles an hour for the 6-1 junior out of Lakeland. Last year he led the Seminoles when game started with 17 tied with Cole Sands. He led the team in wins with eight. Needed somebody to seal the deal at the end of games. 2-2. Two -two. Slider away and he misses. Pretty good at bat going for Bo Jordan here. Got down 1-2 fastball just off the outside edge. Takes that one in a breaking ball. Spinning starts on the edge and breaks off. Takes that one now. Runs back into a predictable count. Got to wonder if he's going to finish him the way he started with that breaking ball again. Good speed with Watson at second, and he misses with that slider, and he walks Bo Jordan. Now you got to deal with Michael Papierski, who struck out twice tonight, reached on an error and scored in the second. Both bullpens right now quiet. Not going to see any more action likely in that Florida State bullpen. And we haven't seen anybody get up and throw yet for LSU. I think it's it's going to take a little action on the base pass for anybody to get up and throw. Poche's pitch count is low. And if he can spin through this one and give you a complete game, that, that gives you everybody ready to go on Friday night. That's it. That might be in, but that's a good pitch. And I think it was in. But Carlton has just missed with that two seam fastball. He was trying to throw a backdoor two seamer before this mm -hmm. one, trying to throw the front door two seamer. Didn't quite get back there, but love that pitch. I mean, you, pitchers have to do that more, make about it, because Papierski's known for going out across the plate and hooking that fastball on the outside. Do part. it again. You can make him think that you may get him out inside, it'll open up that backside. That's no. what they're trying to do. They know you see, you look at Papierski, he kind of strides forward, obviously, but he strides across home plate a little Close bit. Too. Yeah, when, when that front foot comes in, he closes up a little bit. If, if, even if he gets to that pitch, yep. he's going to hook it fine. Can't, yeah. and, and that's what I, I notice things like that as a pitcher. When you sit here and we look, when I see a batter that's striding towards me, but he's striding kind of across the plate and towards me, very hard for a guy to hit that ball Absolutely. in the inner side part of the plate. Down. That one's down. They fake the throw down. Carlton, a 32nd round pick by the Detroit Tigers. And he's dealing with Michael Papierski, who went this year in the ninth round of the Houston Astros. But I don't mind that approach because the truth of the matter is we've not seen many guys that really pitch inside for strikes at the college level. I think it's a lost art that, that has well, to be done more. I think it's a, from a right-handed pitcher, I think it's a tougher pitch to execute, too. He tried to do it again yeah, right there, fastball did. in. But we were talking about it before. I mean, it was a lot easier for me to throw arm side fastball because you could cheat. Like no doubt. Have, not everything had to be exactly right. To throw this one, Hard to, to really do. execute that two-seam fastball and, and, and get it all the way in there, not let it leak over the inside part of the plate, it is a tougher pitch to throw for most mm -hmm. right-handed pitchers than if you could throw a fastball to the arm side. But now he sped that bat up several times. So any kind of an off-speed pitch away, a change-up, even a fastball away or breaking ball away is going to be money. 2-2, instead he challenged him up top with a fastball, and Papierski is gone. Third strikeout tonight for Papierski. We take a look at tonight's Capital One Cup impact performance. The guy stepping up to the plate right now, Jake Slaughter. Three-run Jimmy Jack in the second inning. And look out, what a way to wake yourself up. Still not, sure. still not yeah, sure. Still not sure. He has no idea no. what's going on. How's that fair? I was I was enjoying a little REM sleep. Slaughter's got a chance for another That's one. Can you imagine being jolted out of uh, a sleep like that? Someone's yelling in my ear. Overall, sand shirt. Somebody's drawn all over your chest. Why are we doing that? Just trying to sleep. 384 feet. The last home run to left. Good one there. Poche staying loose. <laughs> just kind of stretching his, his glove yeah. hand. He's kind of in his own world. Good hop. 
Henderson throws out Slaughter. Six outs. That's what they get left for Florida State. 5-2. We head to the bottom of the eighth. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Well, the shortstop, the second baseman, Dykeman and Wright, and this guy, Jared Pochet, all committed to stay at UCLA to get him back to Omaha. And Ben, Pochet tonight is delivering a gem. Yeah, we were worried more to get off to a good start. He struggled sometime, but it wasn't the case. He strikes out the first two Florida State batters in the first inning, both with that overhand breaking ball. He established it early, and then when he did get in trouble, he was able to roll some ground balls. Smith over to Freeman, over to Jake Slaughter, makes an outstanding play, and that was the first of a two double plays. You see him hits the outside corner. Here's the other double play. Smith over to Freeman who makes an outstanding play. And here he's in on the outside corner again to Papierski. So he's been able to kind of dot the I and cross the T. And like he's done so many times in his career, he's made some big pitches when he's needed to. In there for a strike as we begin the bottom of the eighth. 83 pitches. We got a little action going on in that LSU bullpen now. Tyler Holton. The number nine hitter is up. He just missed him last time up. Long fly ball to right field that Dykeman caught a few steps in front of the wall. Zach Hess, who seemingly has taken over as the closer for this LSU team, up and throwing. <laughs> Good breaking ball in there for a strike. He gets ahead one and two. What a security blanket Poche has been for Palmineri over his career. And he said right away, it's amazing what the coaches will tell their teams in, in moments after losses. Palmineri right away, you know, we're in good shape. This is the guy. Who, who would you rather have on the mound mm. than Jared Poche? They got Alex Lang on the team. Shallow left field and playable. One down. Well, Poche was the key. You know, when Poche decided to come back from the draft last year, that's when Kramer Robertson kind of fell in place. So did Cole Freeman. Of course, Dykeman was a draftable sophomore. And when the, all those three decided to come back, he was always coming back. And there you had your nucleus, and the quest for Omaha began for the Tigers. But, but Jared Poche's kind of been the heartbeat for four years now for LSU. Top of the order, Taylor Walls. Oh for three in a first pitch strike. Kind of interesting here in Omaha, the two run scoring leaders in the NCAA, Walls and Kramer Robertson, are a combined 0 for 7 tonight. Your table setters. Yeah, Walls struck out twice. 67 walks for Taylor Walls this year, but today two strikeouts and a double play. Poche's done a remarkable job of is from pitching in front, getting into the good counts. This one to right, Dykeman's there. You know, for a team that made a living out of walking, he's issued two walks. Yeah, and, that, and that's been the key, but that's really the key for a lot of pitchers is working ahead. When I can work ahead, I can get to my secondary stuff. I can start to expand the zone, but really for Jared Poche to start to get ahead and put Florida State on the defense a little bit. And he's had his breaking ball since the first batter of the game. He got the strikeout with the first two. So he's done a nice job of mixing. We saw a couple times in there he kind of lost command a little bit, but was able to make some big pitches when he needed to. And he doesn't always, the big pitch, yes, but efficiency is not necessarily what Poche is always known for. I mean, there's a lot of 2-2-3-2s. Two, two, mm -hmm. he's, been, he's been spot on today. 
Busby looked down at third, saw Josh Smith playing even or a little bit behind the bag, and he tried to bunt his way on. I, mean, I think Poche knew coming in, Florida State's offense is just too good. The way they work it and they get a lot of walks, and he knew he was going to be at a big disadvantage if he didn't pound the strikes off. Ripped up the middle. That's good for a hit. Busby's first of the night. And once again, some traffic on the base pass for Florida State. So the ball comes off his back. Uh, I yeah. like this kid a lot. I agree. You saw him hit a home run straightaway center field yeah. here off yep. of Alex Lang yep. the first time these two teams hooked up. And you can tell when he swings it and barrels it up, the ball comes off of it. Well, this may be their spot. They got Luke and then Neoporti on deck. He just missed hitting a three-run home run his last time up. Quincy Neporte. First Luke, though, who doubled his last time up. Once again, getting ahead, Jared Poche. One more base runner. I think this is Hess's ball game. Mm -hmm. Oh, and two. How about that back to a breaking ball? Starts it way off the outside corner. As a hitter, you kind of give up, or you see it out there. All of a sudden, he comes right back and catches the outside corner. Now, a lot of options. You see Zach Hess looking on. He's heated up. He's ready to go if needed. Sophomore from Orlando, Florida. One, two, jam shot, and the range of Freeman with the flip is able to make the out. A little backspin on that one, and it stayed in the infield. Jared Poche walks off the mound, and he may be walking into LSU history. That ball was absolutely hammered by McKay. It takes a wide turn. He's in there, safe at second base. Deep to right, the Omaha native has gone yard for TCU. And the Horn Frogs live to play another day. Merrill out of Omaha, hit the home run for TCU. Evan Skaug hoping to get warm for TCU. They got themselves a showdown with Louisville. We just had our guy up here, a big game. Pitch TCU into this situation. Ah. And that game will be seen Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, ESPN 2. Winner of that one has to go through the Gators twice. Nope. Oregon State waits for the winner of tonight's game on Friday. Oh, there's the celebration. Kramer Robertson delivers a hit. Kim Mulkey, the Baylor women's basketball coach, and more significantly, the mom of Kramer Robertson. It's like finally someone took the uh, cover off the rim. We got a ball to go through. Two seamer leak back over, and he's hit balls harder than this here over the last few days here in Omaha, but that one in the right spot, and, and one that LSU could really use right now. All five runs came in the second inning. They have not scored since. You get the first guy on at the top part of this lineup. This is when Paul Maneri starts to get aggressive. Yeah, the wheels start to spin a little bit. Don't be surprised you see the hit and run. Cole Freeman does an outstanding job hitting the ball on the ground. Busby's way in on the grass. Robertson right away goes, throw down to second, and he beat it. Make sure Matt Henderson, who caught it, is all right out there. Well, you know Carlton's going to throw strikes. So first pitch hit and run, they put it on. Freeman swings through it. Watch his throw. I mean, this is look out right over the top of the head of Drew Carlton out there. That was a BB. We get spiked. I think it was the uh, trailing left cleat that yeah. ran right into that shin. 
and or knee area of Matt Henderson. But for LSU's sake, that broke an 0 for 12 skid for Robertson. So they've managed to, assuming they can hold on and win this game, they've done this without any offense yeah. from their leadoff guy, who's hit it hard, and you get the sense that for somebody that's had the numbers he's had all season and been clutch all season, you know, a hit like that can start things for you. Yeah, because, I mean, Kramer Robertson really ignites this offense. But what's made this offense really good the last seven or eight weeks is the production depth. You know, production down at the bottom of it. And that's when it really started to turn, fellas. Michael Papierski's been hitting it really well. Zach Watson was down there recently. Just, a, just a week ago. And now you got Slaughter, who hits a, a three-run homer at the bottom, too. So that's what's really separated this LSU offense, you know, from most kind of, if you look at the Louisville offense, it's very good. It's got production throughout. Of course, Cal, Cal State Fulton, who's out of it now, you know, they had some production as well. This is unfortunate for Matt Henderson right here. Yeah, Matt Henderson's going to come out of the game, getting some help from Drew Mendoza with the arm on his shoulder and you just saw Kramer Robertson go in there and tap him as well relieve Mendoza hey after the Mets and Dodgers Sports Center at night it was outstanding last night now we assume it's going to be that way again tonight Kenny Mayne and Larry Beal where Aloha means hello again they'll have all the baseball highlights from the College World Series Major League stories the NBA draft news there's tons of that and everything else, an old school sports center at night. It streams live on the ESPN app. It comes up after Mets and Dodgers. Hank Truluck has gone in to play second base for the Seminoles. As Henderson is out, you guys talked about how aggressive LSU would be. Had the hit and run on. It was a swing and a miss, but Robertson stole the bag. Robertson's ninth steal of the year as they tend to Henderson on the Florida State bench. Yeah, kind of an unusual play, really. You don't see, I mean, it was, looked like the trail leg of Robinson, the left leg of Robinson. I think it was the back heel. Back heel, and maybe the spike got him a little bit. And guys, Matt Henderson's been dealing with some pain in that left foot for the last three weeks. He's been in a walking boot for a while. They were doing the best they could to just try and manage it, but he's in a lot of pain here in the dugout, and it could have something to do with that other previous existing injury. I think it's his ankle. Yep, I agree. It was his ankle. It hit him a little bit lower than I thought. Robertson dances off. Freeman lays down a bunt. There's only one play, and Freeman can fly. By half step, is Mendoza okay? Kind of caught that one awkwardly, or it popped out of his glove. It couldn't tell, but hesitation over there at first on the fielder's choice. I've already seen a safety once today. Don't be surprised if you see it again. Yeah. See what Mike Martin just did? Went down, gave a hug did he? to Matt Henderson. Yeah, that's not surprising. Antoine Duplantis probably, you know, might be the only three-hole hitter in the country with one home run. But, boy, could he drive them in. Florida State's going to bring the infield in. they got to cut this run off. 58 runs batted in on the season. Dykeman's got 73, and then it's Duplantis. The other thing you've done if you're... LSU, you've now re-engaged Robertson. You know, stole the base, got a hit, played well in the field tonight. Yeah. Back engaged in all this. There was some serious frustration. Yeah, I mean, and look, if LSU's going to make a deep run in this tournament, Kramer Robertson's going to have to get going. I mean, I don't think they could do it without him. I mean, he's really ignited this offense at times this year, and they're going to be firing on all cylinders if they're going to go deep. Kim Mulkey's mom was uh, quite the baseball player in her early years. Played uh, Little League Baseball and stuck with it for a while and was the catcher for Kramer Robertson growing up. Backyard, he spins some curveballs. Finally, he got to be big enough and strong enough that there was a ball in the dirt that struck her ankle. You know Kim Mulkey, she's not going to let you know she's in too much pain. She shut it down, though. That's right. We're good. 
he's done plenty. Fastball in. And I do it again, and I do it again, and I do it again. Yeah. I think that's the right pitch. It's got to be down and in just in case he does get something to it. Maybe you get that ground ball to the second baseman, or maybe the first baseman you can cut the run off at home. The plant is a fool you, though. The hands are quicker than yeah, you think they yeah. are. And if you stay in there too much, he can get a barrel to it. Set up in. Hits it on the ground. Mendoza fires home. High throw. Hey, safe. Kramer Robertson slid underneath the tag that was applied by Raleigh. They got the ground ball they wanted. They got the ground ball they wanted, and Drew Mendoza had plenty of time. But the throw high enough that Raleigh had to go up and get it. I think the only question was when he went up, he kind of reached twice. Like the first swipe didn't get him, went back and got him. I thought he tagged him. Just couldn't tell if the feet were in first. College World Series rules do allow you to review plays at the plate, but that one seems quite clear. That right foot touches home before Raleigh touches Robertson. Yeah, and it was perfect execution by Carlton. He gets the fastball down and in right where he needed to. Yeah, he's Mendoza, safe. plenty of time, but the throw pulls Raleigh up right there. When he has to go up and get it, he just cannot get it back in time, and there's the tag, but it clearly looks like Kramer Robertson's feet go across on plate. That was pretty athletic play by Raleigh to go up and get that because as a catcher, you, I mean, you, you just don't have to do that. Go up and in one play, go down and try to make the tag. If the, if the throw is on line, I think he's out. Yeah, I do too. No doubt. But again, Robertson gets on. He shows you his speed by stealing second. He comes darting home on a pretty hard hit ball to first base from Duplantis. So we do have our official review underway. They can show it on the big screen here at TD Ameritrade. That's a real hard look because the angle almost suggests that but the, uh, tag the glove, it, I know, is yeah. on the, it's not on his arm, though. The no, tag's way up high. Yeah, the tag's up on the shoulder. I think the only question was whether, I mean, if his front foot pops up at all, in that case, he's out. But the front foot looked like it stayed down, clipped the base right at, or clipped home plate right at the front end. And I think Graber Robertson's safe. Well, again, this does uh, sort of bring up the question. As long as you have instant replay on plays at home, why wouldn't you expand it to every other I base? Agree. I totally agree. Review shows the play is confirmed. The initial call safe. And LSU tacks on a huge run here in the top of the ninth to make it 6-2. to two. Nine hits in the game for LSU. Robertson's first results in a run. Now Dykeman, the right fielder. Greg Dykeman, second round pick for the A's, doubled his first time up and scored, and since then go. struck out twice and grounded into a double play. Plantis is a threat to go. He's got 19 steals on the season, tied with Freeman for the team high. Not going, and Dykeman takes a big rip at it. Ben, you see this uh, this swing translating at the next level? I think so. I mean, you got to remember, Greg Dykeman didn't get to play much as freshman year. He had a hurt foot, only got about 28 bats in. So last year was his first full year to actually play. Did well. There were a lot of holes there. Goes to summer ball, comes back, and now he's a different hitter. Still some holes there, but a much better hitter. But the the, the, the pop in the bat, I mean, it, it's going to translate. And, of course, he's got the big league body and, and a big arm from right field. So I don't see a whole lot of weaknesses. I think he just needs the at-bats. I'll tell you the other thing. I, he's turned himself into a good right fielder. And yes. last year he was not a good first baseman. He no. Was, he, he, just, he, he looked out of place. He never looked comfortable. He looks very comfortable in right field. If you talk to the coaches, he really worked hard this past summer. Took, they said, thousands of balls off the bat 
out in right field trying to get reads on it. Remember, he's a shortstop at Brother Martin High School down in New Orleans and played a little bit of first base last year and finally probably got to his natural position where he'll play at the professional level in right field. Runner now goes and Dykeman fouls it off. A little game of cat and mouse between Mike Martin with the pitch out, Paul Maneri, who wasn't sending him, and now he did. And like last night, the Dodgers game against the Mets is now going to start on ESPN2. That one is away. <laughs> Carlton the closer having a hard time here making sure they don't tack on in this. that you seem to plan this run in here. Two two he's going foul again. Antoine Duplantis, Cal Raleigh going to be teammates this summer, playing for Harwich out in the Cape. That's a pretty good way to spend the summer, by the way. You're not kidding. Few, I was a Kettleer. I was a Katuit Kettleer. It's not the Alaskan Summer League, but it's... I wish I would have done one of each, to be honest with you. I wish I would have seen Alaska once and gone to the Cape once. It would have been cool to see both. But... Alaska's a wood bat league, Ben? No, it was aluminum at the was time. It really? Now it is, yeah. Runner goes. This one is grounded to first. Mendoza fields it and steps on first for the out. Garrett Poche is uh, keeping that left arm and that left hand loose. Eight innings. 98 pitches. Longest start of the year. We saw Zach Hess warming. He has uh, sat back down. He assume that Poche is going to go back out there, especially with a tack on run. How about that, Lynn? It's, you've got some design We've seen going that before, on haven't we? That's Rick Vaughn. Rick Vaughn, yeah. Without the glasses at first, right? That's outstanding. <laughs> they allow that at Stanford? Did you do that? I don't think we could have got away with that. No. No. <laughs> No, I think there might have been a discussion, and uh, <laughs> the old one guard would have come out, and we'd have solved the whole thing. Yeah. Just shave her all down. Niner. And then do it that way. No, that wasn't going to happen. Now that the uh, game has moved to the ninth, we're wide awake, which means we'll be wide awake for the right. next three or four hours. <laughs> Go ahead. When you want to Watch shut this it. one on replay when you get <laughs> home, because I'm not going to be sleeping for yeah. a while. That tired thing, that's passed. <laughs> Power nap is in, ready to go. <laughs> exactly. What do you mean you guys are tired? Four, five, six, due up for Florida State. This one deep to left center field. Wells is not going to get it. Another run for LSU. And a big time double for Zach Watson. It's seven to two, Tigers. He just keeps hitting, Ben. Third hit of the night for the freshman Watson. A battle all the way through a bat, and it looked like he was either trying to throw him a cutter or a slider that just didn't have much slide to it. Stayed right in the middle of the plate, up in a spot that Watson could go get it, drives it beyond Wells, who was playing a little bit more shallow than mm -hmm. I thought he would. When I looked up, I thought he'd be a little bit deeper. Even if he is deeper, I'm not sure if he gets to it, but it's a two-out RBI by Watson, and the Tigers, after a five spot in the second, have now but two more on the board here in the ninth. Will Zerzow is going to come on in for Florida State. Things have grounded to a bit of a halt here. LSU looking to move on. 7-2, they lead it in the top of the ninth.
Welcome back there, getting set in Los Angeles. Cody Bellinger. I mean, we, we don't just hit homers. We now lead the league in homers on a team that's got Corey Seager, who went yard three times last night. Cody Bellinger, 22 home runs this season. It comes up next. We'll start that one on ESPN2. And as soon as we wrap up here at TD Ameritrade at the College World Series, they will hop over to ESPN. Corey Seager didn't play here, but his brother did. Kyle, Kyle played Seager here, here yeah. for a few years at North Carolina. Back to back years, they finished runner up. Kyle to hits the a walk off double. Kyle. Kyle hits a walk off double two nights ago. Corey's like, yeah, whatever, dude. Brother hits three bombs. Three the next bombs. Day. Thanks, I got you. Will Zierzow on, who was really good in the postseason so far for Florida State. On just to try to get him in and see if they can get a little offensive magic in the bottom of the ninth inning. But that man right there has been a big part of this. LSU offense through the second half of the season and especially today. Three hits for the freshman. Watson drives in another run there with that last double. We haven't seen yet Watson really defend in center field. He yeah. just hadn't had that many opportunities. But, Ben, we were down at Hoover, and mm -hmm. he put on a defensive clinic yeah. for about five days in a row. I mean, he can really – and it's amazing how quickly Watson has adapted to that position. Short, shortstop in high school, coming out, gets on campus, and there he puts him into the outfield, and he has not looked back. Nope. And, guys, considering all the speed on this LSU team, Paul Maneri thinks Zach Watson is the fastest. Now, I don't know if he told Cole Freeman that, <laughs> but he thinks that. <laughs> Left field, Luke going back and still going back. The wind got it, but he got it before it does hit the ground. LSU's got seven. They add two. That makes it a little easier for Jared Poche as he is set to come on out. See if he can close this one in the ninth. He's got a deal with four, five, and six. Oregon State made teams pay for mistakes all season long. Oh, what a play by Rutschman, and he'll get a double play out of it. That one is up the middle. Off the bat of Atley Rutschman. Oregon State runs its winning streak to 22. Harris in left field. Brand slam on the first one ever in TD Ameritrade. Once they start to smell blood, the foot is on the pedal. We're back, everybody, as the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Yeah, what they also do, Oregon State, they smelled it from the first batter the other night. One batter. Yep. One pitch, one bunt. Boom, we're at second base. We got to run. It's one zip, and we're on our way. First pitch, bunt single. Second pitch, hit and run. Third at bat. Base hit by Larnick. Sixth time that Oregon State has been to the College World Series. They've won it twice. 23 game win streak. It's the second time <laughs> they've done that. You are reading that correctly. Two times this year. Two separate 23 game win streaks. You got to think, though, Ben, they're going to face Mr. Lang on Friday night. Yeah, and it, he'll have to be good. Oh, he'll have to be very good, very absolutely. Good. But I, I, the one thing, and, and this is not meant to take anything away from Oregon State, but you know, LSU walked them 12 times in. They did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was, they took full advantage of it, clearly. Just yeah. something about Oregon State, though. I mean, 56. I mean, if you go to all these teams, there, there's been a down point somewhere in all the teams that made it to Omaha. You had a stretch where you just didn't play that well for a while. Didn't see that with Oregon State. You know, they just kept on and on and on. I don't know if it's the depth of the pitching that allows them to do that, the way they play offense. You know, and, and the things about. Oof, that one is hammered by wow. Neaporte to left. We're looking up at it, and it is gone. Quincy Neaporte hits a home run. His 11th of the season. Well, you thought he might hit with him, and he did. And that was a no doubt about it. You could almost just hear that one come off the bat. If you knew it got up in the air at all, it had a chance. And Nia Porte, you talk about getting all of one. Papirski's kind of set up in the middle of the plate, and that's exactly where it's delivered. But it's up a little bit, and you talk about get a hold of a fastball. Watch this. And yes, sir, that one's going a long way. Poche been getting ahead all night long with that first pitch. That just about got to the concourse, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah, Duplantis looked after a step and said, no chance. 
Those two tack on runs in that ninth inning proving to be pretty large. Allows Poche to face this batter, and that one is ripped to left. Cal Raleigh, back-to-back -back shots for Florida State. Huh. So much for just getting ahead with a strike. Now how big do those two runs look in the ninth inning? O'Shea had once in his career given him nine innings. That was back in 2015. He's not going to give him nine tonight. All right, you saw Neoporte hit his 11th of the year. Cal Raleigh hits his ninth. Both were on fastballs, and both were absolute no-doubters. Both clear the bullpen out in left field, and left-hander not too happy after that one. You would think that is it, but another masterful performance by Jared Poche, who will leave with the lead here in the ninth. Back-to-back -back pitches, we had back-to-back -back home runs. First time we've seen that since 2006, and we'll be back to TD Ameritrade. He's still in line to get the win. Paul Maneri walking by Jared Poche, who's taking off the puppies. He just gave up back-to-back -back shots. That's the first time we've seen that at TD Ameritrade. They were on back-to-back -back pitches. And we have had 14 home runs hit in this 2017 College World Series. Well, he was warm, and then he sat, and now they're going to Zach Hess, the freshman who has really burst onto the scene here lately. Ben, he has really grown up this year, too. I mean, for Zach Hess, the role has changed over the course of the season, but he clearly, by the way he's being used in, in this College World Series, is now seen as the closer. Yeah, I mean, this is a role he is comfortable with. I mean, he had the midweek starts for LSU early in the year, and he tried to pitch a little bit, tried to be a little bit too fine. When they moved to the back end of the bullpen, it was actually a promotion. And Alan Dunn, the pitching coach for LSU, told him, said, listen, I want you to get back to what you do best. I want you to try to hit your spots for the main thing. I want you to throw it as hard as you can and throw strikes and let's use the breaking ball. And he's been lights out since going back. He quit thinking and started just throwing. And I like this matchup. Okay, one of the best freshman hitters in the country. We've seen Mendoza look great tonight against a true fastball. Good start for Zach Hess. Throws one by Mendoza. Solo homer and a single, and he has squared up just about every time he's been up. A little insight into the personality of Hess. I know you said he's made for this, but the idea that we're just going out there and trying to close a College World Series game to get us into a rematch with Oregon State. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different right now. There's a lot of motion, but he has been locked in as of late. That's what he does best. I mean, and, I, and when I say throw the ball, it's not like he can't hit spots. You see those three fastballs, but Pierce clearly had rocked towards the outside corner, and all three of them right in that neighborhood from 95 to 96 miles an hour. Nobody out. Back-to-back -back home runs have turned it into a 7-4 game for Florida State, and Mike Martin looking for a little more magic. Oh, a nasty breaking ball, and gone is Mendoza. That's filthy. 95, 95, 96, and that. And that right there, my friends, will hurt your feelings. I mean, that's a breaking ball. It's a good one. You're talking about upper to mid-90s fastball. Then you break that off, and I'm telling you what, that'll send anybody back to the dugout. Wow. Yeah, that's not fair. Ooh. Hank Trulick, who came in to play second base after Henderson was hurt, looking at 96 miles an hour. Again, winner off tomorrow, plays again Friday. Alex Lang ready to go, and then, and then if he can hold on to a lead, you bring this horse in. It's about as good a stuff as we've seen yeah. out of a bullpen. Stuff here. Rasmussen from Oregon State looked really good when he came out of the bullpen game one, too. No. Are we just going to cut it just because we can at this point? You know, I don't so know if he does that on purpose, but well, sometimes it does that. You that know, one, 
that it had cuts, a to and, it. And sometimes you'll see it cut. Or sometimes you'll see it go like a two-seamer as well. And that's what makes him so dangerous, and that's why Dunn wanted Papirski more to get in the middle of the play and said, let him just throw his best fastball because it's cut sometimes. It sells a little high. And we got a closer for the Dodgers tonight, Kenley Jansen, who hasn't given up a walk yet this season. That game on ESPN2 against the Mets, he said he can control cut. He can throw it so it cuts. He can throw it so it works. Mm -hmm. He can throw any way he wants to do it. And Hess has shown us a fastball and a wicked breaking ball. Another fastball, 97. And this is what a closer does. Yeah, when you, when you get to mid to upper 90s kind of fastball, even though Papirski had set up on the outside part of the plate, this ball runs kind of inside. But when it's at 97, look. That's dialing it up a notch or two. Pinch hitter coming in for Florida State, Rhett Applin. Last chance for Mike Martin in 2017. Oh. Even that cut. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. I think it's just the way it comes out the hand I'm occasionally. I'm going to tell you this. If he can figure out how to oh, do yeah. it on purpose. Because <laughs> he's noticed it's cutting, but it's not losing velocity. It's no. 97 with a cut. Poche got him to this point. That'll uh, be enough words of encouragement for Appling. The winner gets Oregon State Friday night, and they got to beat them twice. They've only lost four times all year, but what an impressive performance from Poche. And Hess tonight with his heat. I think the radar was broken there. I don't think it was 68. <laughs> Just flip one in there at 68. Yeah. <laughs> New. Pretty good. Freshman took a little walk. Deep breath. Reset himself. Missed. Brings up Tyler Holton. He will bat in the nine spot. Flowers goes in as a pinch runner. J.C. Flowers, usually the center fielder, but struggling lately with the bat, so he sat tonight. Pretty good at bat. Coming in off the bench as a pinch hitter against that guy. And you're behind early after seeing some cheese. Holton can, uh, he can run into one. We saw it earlier. He yes, sent he one can. of the warning track. He can get on, he get back at the top of the order, and the tying run in Taylor Walls. Ha! That has a little cut to it. That does. That's dirty. Missed consistently outside with that pitch. Yeah, the misses are small, but with that kind of stuff, especially with the lead that he had at the time, I want to see Papirski more in the middle of the plate with that stuff. Until I get to 0-2, maybe 1-2, I'll bounce towards the corner, but I want him to be aggressive in his own with the stuff that he has. Ah. That's Ooh, in wow. there for a strike. Flowers moves down to second base. High strike on that breaking ball. 
But now one strike away from a date with Oregon State on Friday night. Good spoil there. Name to remember next year. We saw Tyler Holton pitch in this ball game, but he will almost assuredly be back at Florida State. Draft eligible sophomore taken late in the draft this year, but I thought you were talking kid. about Hess. You got two names to remember. Yeah, he'll be back for sure. But for Holton, um, this is a name to remember next year because he was really impressive, incredibly composed. Right, here we go. Come on, Sheets back, here of Tom we go. Glavin out there yeah. from the left side. Ben, I'm with you. I, I think we're trying to be maybe a little bit too fine here yeah. on plus counts. Well, he's thrown two breaking balls, too. Neither one of them has been even, even attempted at. Breaking ball's outstanding. But now I've kind of gotten myself in a position now. I want to throw the pitch. I got a 2-2. You know, I want to make it happen. You know, I don't want to run to a predictable count and get back to 3-2 and take a chance of right. bringing the tie and run to the plate. All right, here we go. Whatever pitch he likes right now that he has the most confidence to throw a strike down in the zone, you throw it and you throw it for a strike. Calls it a strike. Looked outside, but called strike three. And Hess, Poche, and the LSU Tigers get a showdown with Oregon State. And another trip to Omaha where Mike Martin leaves empty handed, save for the memories. I don't think he thought that was a strike either. I think it's very marginal. That's not a strike. That ball didn't even try to come back, kind of went around the plate. I don't think it's a strike, but not the way the home plate umpire saw it and called it strike three. And Jared Poche is pretty pumped up. Jared Poche now 39 wins and the all-time winningest pitcher in LSU baseball history. Can't wait to see that one Friday at 3 Eastern time. Will Oregon State go to 57-4 or will LSU force a one game playoff on Saturday and of course Louisville and TCU tomorrow at 8 Eastern time on ESPN 2. Look forward to seeing you for that one. That will do it from here. LSU the long ball back in vogue in Omaha tonight. Jared Poche picks up career win number 39 and getting a lot of high fives for Ben McDonald, Laura Rutledge. I'm Carl Ravish now Shambi and the